What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I am your host, Nick. Joined by the household, we got Leia. What scooter? Do you want to go? Do you want? Do you like scooter? I like scooter. You like scooter? Okay. Yeah, I like scooter. <laughs> okay, we'll go with scooter. That's official. <laughs> now I'm still gonna probably say Leia first. It can be either way. Okay, Leia yeah. the scooter. No, okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, we got sweet boy Justin. You hear that sweet voice? <laughs> my just talking. Wave. Sierra and love of my life, mother of my child, and soon to be wife. Soon. Nelly Joy. Soon to be wife. Soon to be wife. Real soon. Let's not give it away. Real soon. Dang it. Well, it's real soon. <laughs> How is everyone doing? We got a great episode today. Our guest is Gertie Abrera from Real Housewives of Miami. Our first uh, Miami Real girl. of Miami. So fun episode with Gertie. We can't wait to give that to you, but we have a lot to get into before we get to Gertie. Also, I feel like we didn't get, you know, we didn't have as, as much of a robust reality recap episode this week, obviously, given our guest, Tom Swartz, and all the shenanigans that we talked about with him. So were there any other pressing topics we wanted to, to get into specifically around either Summer House or the Valley or Vanderpump? I know uh, Rachel's still been mouthing off. Uh, she recently had Joe on her, her show. Well, she had a Joe interview and an emergency. Those podcast. are two separate ones. <sighs> what, is two separate ones? what is the emergency? <laughs> what did she have to rush to tell everyone? Well, She's gone rogue again. Yeah, oh. she she did go rogue. There was a Life and Style article, best and worst dressed at the iHeart Awards. She posted that Dana and Katie were worst dressed. So that was Joe. And nobody knew that Rachel convinced her to do that. But then Rachel posted an emergency so podcast I, saying, respond to it, yes. That's I did it. She felt she a calling to be a good person. She definitely got yeah. forced to do that episode. I think her she's a prisoner publicist. of iHeart. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Really? Free her. Or maybe uh, not. There also was a video, I don't know if it was the same episode, her commenting on why she's suing Ariana. Yeah, I mean, she essentially said, if we're all out to hold each other accountable, then I guess I'm doing the same. And this is the same lawsuit that came out kind of a while ago where she was suing both of them. Yeah. Revenge she's porn. responding Revenge to the porn same and... thing. And then she said something to the effect of, well, if she's going to sue Tom, I guess by default, she has to sue Ariana. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, I guess. Like, nothing she technically is saying is wrong. You know, like... Legally speaking, perhaps. Yeah, she, I mean, she has every right to feel violated and upset and hurt, but also... But it's like you're... Well, she's not literally saying it, but she is strongly suggesting that once again, she has no problem with Ariana being collateral damage to her own selfish needs. And what's interesting about this whole video, again, like revenge porn is wrong and disgusting and gross, but like she is the only one. Well, now we're talking about it, but like she keeps bringing up this video that to my knowledge, no one's ever really seen has not been it's released not on the internet yeah you know it's not like it's this video that like everyone's seen and she keeps bringing it up and truly at, i mean i don't know like it must be very stressful to find out you're being sued in general for anyone yeah and just the emotional pain that she is causing ariana for for what every time she speaks it's just like why i kind of have a hot take in the sense of like i don't support rachel but i do understand why she can feel hurt or like disempowered by her nudes being distributed without her consent like that's where i kind of like i think she has a right to feel upset totally she has a right to be upset but when the distributed do we even know if that happened what is the i mean like legally distribution just means to like give access to so like we know that ariana sent it to herself from sandoval's phone so that's distribution on one level and then i'm sure she showed her friends oh she had to yeah we assume like if she showed it to her friends that would be different than if she like sent it that's also her. giving access to, I believe. I think it's, but that's kind of what I'm saying. We're yeah. just, we're already like, we're literally getting into the semantics yeah. of it. And but it's, it's also like, yeah, we're talking about a video that honestly no one has talked about really ever until she did the lawsuit. Until yeah. this lawsuit came out about revenge porn. But do you think maybe she has to, and this is a devil's advocate, like she has to keep talking about it because people are now saying, like, people are comparing, like, she did a lot of horrible things and people are comparing the fact that she's part of this affair as a way of invalidating that she can feel. Like disempowered. I think she has to keep talking about it because she's held prisoner at iHeart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, there you go. It just, I guess it's just at the end of the day, it seems to demonstrate a lack of growth or maturity or 
you know, it's if the whole point of not coming back to Vanderpump is to protect your mental health and and give yourself distance from these people. But yet you're constantly bringing up and you're constantly causing attention to something that you want to go away. It just it contradicts itself completely. Yeah, I think I mentioned this when we first started talking about when it was first got filed, but it reeks of that whole that one episode where, again, Rachel made that comment to either Lala or Katie about like, well, I wouldn't leave your man alone with me. And the next day we thought she was going to wake up and be like, hey, I'm sorry, I got a little drunk. Yeah. Or whatever. And it turns out she was like, no, fuck you guys for like being mean to me. And it's very, it was very tit for tat. It was very like, well, if you're going to do this to me, I'm going to do this to you. So it pretty much feels like very similar in that vein that Rachel is just, you know, like, yeah, but what about me? But what about me? But what about my needs? I mean, at some point, someone's got to, you know, take the high road, so to speak. And listen, again, if if this video was all over the place and somehow it was, you know, affecting her mental health, but like, where is this, I, this, again, she's the only one bringing up the video at this point. And I, I stand by the fact that I'm like, even Ariana showing it to people, I understand that there's technicalities with uh, distribution or whatever, but my whole thing is that clearly these people are decent human beings, that it didn't end up on a Reddit leaked thread or, you know what I mean? Like that fact yeah. that nobody has seen it, it didn't go, like it wasn't these untrustworthy people yeah. that are trying to ruin your life. I think these are people that were trying to support their friend in a shocking turn of events, but like no one was coming after her. Because if they were, they would have released the video. Yeah. That's a good point. Distribution wasn't done out of harm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there wasn't an intent for so, revenge. Yeah, you know? it was just somebody being like, hey, this happened to me. What do you think? Because this is fucked up. Well, I think Ariana also talked about it on Sheena's podcast a while back about like when she saw the video. It's not like she like sat there with her popcorn and watched it. She just she sent it to herself. And then like everything that she did was reactionary of like what she was seeing in that moment. And, you know, it's Sandoval's fault for taking those screenshots or those videos, those recordings. And Ariana was simply reacting to, you know, the pain and hurt that she was feeling in that moment of finding out that she was being cheated on with her best friend. Well, and she sent the video to Rachel saying, what is this? Yeah. So and I'm like, and now it's being flipped around like it's distribution. And to me, I'm like, what else would she have done? I mean, if that is why she is suing Ariana, that seems so fucked. I mean, I don't know if Ariana sent it to other people, but I do know that I think she sent it to Rachel. Right. And to be like, what is this when she called her? But other than that, it, it hasn't gone anywhere. Right. I could be wrong. But as far as I know, the only people she sent it to were maybe herself and to Rachel. It's a spin. Like, you know, and I'm mean, just like the whole thing is if you want to grow from a situation, you have to stop not victimizing because I don't want to say that her feelings aren't valid. I'm just saying you are creating a buzz around something that could very easily die. Like yeah. we're all tired of talking about it, you know? Yeah. What I'm not tired of talking about because this is honestly so interesting and I kind of agree. Gypsy's leaving Ryan over food hoarding and snoring. Allegedly. I don't really know what food hoarding means. I don't but either. We it, not. But I can see how that would piss me off. Why? Food hoarding. I don't know. It sounds yucky. According to ScienceDirect.com, food hoarding is an appetite behavior characterized by foraging for food and carrying it from the source to a home or burrow where it is stored for a period of time before it's consumed. So he's like bringing food to the house and then not eating it. I mean, I do that. Wait. And like not allowing her to eat it, perhaps? Oh, no. I'm just trying to figure out what the issue would be of I bring my groceries home and sometimes I don't eat them at all. Doesn't it seem bizarre? Also, it, apparently Ryan also filed a restraining order a against Gypsy. First, no. No. So we have the mutual restraining order, which is, seems to be like a, a popular thing these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear f for some people it's really hard to get a restraining order. And then, but I don't know. Then you hear stories like this and maybe it's not so hard, you know? What well, was it, Monica, that said that she got a restraining order from. I think, didn't we ask Monica why because she Because Tanisha had... filed Tanisha. one against Monica, but Monica was like, no, 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 it's the other way around. So then Monica tried filing one against Tanisha, and then the cops were like, this is messy. Yeah. And like, what? <laughs> you two figure this out amongst yeah. yourselves. Yeah, but it, it does seem like people are able to do this. The whole like, well, if you're going to do this to me, I'll have file one against you. Also, the accusations seem to go in a weird direction. And what I mean by that is the first alleged accusation was the accusation from, again, Gypsy's inner circle that she was afraid that Ryan might be physical, mm -hmm. which, again, was all conjecture. But now we're like, it's like that didn't land. So now we're going to food hoarding. 
and she, snoring. She said that she was especially bothered by their shared fridge, which was filled with old food items that needed to be thrown away. This I can so that's relate the to. Deal. Sometimes Danny will make food and then it stays there until I throw it away. And I'm just like, throw it out. Not to call out <laughs> Nellie and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Heads are turning. Nellie's mom was in town for the birth of River and stayed with us for six-ish weeks. And then she went home. And she was uh, back home for two, three, two, three weeks. weeks. And because of the opportunity we got from our dear friends at Patron to take uh, the Valfiles on the road, we flew Dally's mom back. And when she got there, she opened the fridge and noticed some leftovers that she put, put in the Tupperware before she had left last time. Oh. What, yes. What, Disgusting. What was the leftovers? It was like potatoes and like- Nally and I broccoli. are not leftover <laughs> people. We, we, we are unfortunately, shamefully, we waste, we're, we're wasteful. We are. Yeah. We don't eat leftovers. It's, it's a disgrace. We acknowledge it. Nally's mom is always like, well, I'll just put it in the fridge because you, you might eat it this time. We're like, okay. Speaking of my mom, she, um, Nick so graciously gave her credit in a people magazine interview over this past weekend oh, you did wait, some did i say something wrong no she was like it was so nice how he um put emphasis on that i you know am single and retired but he didn't want to throw in that i'm absolutely stunning in case anyone was curious <laughs> well that'd have been weird for me to be <laughs> like she's single retired and absolutely beautiful for any single men eligible eligible men i didn't hype up your mom no. enough and people i'm no. sorry <laughs> I'm no. sorry, but mom. It's okay. Now's your chance. I was going to say, take your moment. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've said it on the show. Now, his mom is an absolute stunner. She is. Total she's a, babe. She's a babe. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Just going to keep it real that it, it definitely makes me feel better about marrying Natalie. <laughs> you know, like genes matter. Yeah. Like aging gracefully. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like aging is a byproduct of both your genetic makeup and then how do you take care of yourself? You Sounds know, green. I don't think Nellie and I are guaranteed to age gracefully just because our parents have. But, but it's not a great sign when your parents don't. And the fact that they do. That was always my like way to like, oh, my God, this in a different life. Obviously. Yeah, sure, obviously. Sure, yeah. But it would be like first and be like, yeah, anyway. So here's a picture of my mom. And she's 60, she's 60. Just saying. <laughs> that should go on dating profile. Wait. You want to go on a second date? I think you a picture of my mom. You hacked the system. That's why there's like family photos and people's like dating profiles. That's why I said in Love is Blind, you, they shouldn't meet They shouldn't meet each other. Until they meet the parents. They should meet each other's parents before they see each other and have that potentially influence their decision because it might, you know? Your dad called me to talk about some wedding stuff and he was like, by the way, I'm 67, not 70. <laughs> Because I was saying, <laughs> people keep saying River looks like Nick's 70 year old dad. He's like, by the way, three years. Don't age me. Yeah. Yeah. It Don't counts. Don't steal those three I was years like, from I'm him. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Would you be offended if I didn't have any photos of you in my um, camera roll? Camera roll. Absolutely. Yeah. The amount of times that I have to be like, take a video of me and River right now. Take a picture. <laughs> take a picture. I feel like maybe you wouldn't if I didn't say that. That's not true. But yet I still have tons of photos. No, you of have me. tons of photos of me. Yeah. Kyle and Amanda, though. Amanda doesn't have photos of Kyle. Which... Kind of sad. I understand sad. it. I How? understand it because if you look at my camera roll, it's just my dog. Yeah. It's so my dog hate... and it's food. So you hate your husband, too. Interesting. <laughs> is this like, is this something that now and I, just I love can, my dog more. can come to expect <laughs> that like as how long you've been married to Danny? Almost three years. Almost three years. And Kyle and Amanda? Have like one year. They're one married one year, but I think together five? Yeah. They've been together for a while. I've been with my partner for seven years, and I will say I don't have the most photos of him, but oh. he's also not doing the most for me to photograph. When we go places, for sure, but if you open up my camera roll right now, you'd probably take a little scroll. I'm like, what are we doing that I'm taking yeah, photos maybe, of you? Maybe it would take a little scroll, you know? Yeah, how many photos do you have of me? How many? I mean, I I don't know if I can yeah, count know. right now in this moment, but like, um, yeah, I was like, if you looked at my camera roll, it's all Coachella, which he was not yeah, a part yeah, of. Yeah. I'm so. like, if we, if we go before Coachella, um, I have a lot of pictures of Tyler Cameron holding River. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, wait, that's kind of cute. I have a so lot of other men. Like, it's actually my background. <laughs> <laughs> I have this picture of Tyler Cameron as my wallpaper. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> not Nothing closed. to see there. <laughs> um, no. Okay, no, from our date night was the last time 
I have you before Coachella. Our date night. Our date night. How about that? See, and you're doing something cute together, which makes sense that you would have a photo of. Oh, and then I have this video of, oh, of when you were smoking weed and you were washing your face in the kitchen sink (laughs) and you were scared that I was going to post it and put you on blast, but I'm doing it right now. (laughs) Wait, thoughts on, okay, so it's one thing to not have pictures in the camera roll, but what about posting? Jail, you you Not posting. Yeah. What no. do you mean not post it? What do you mean? On Instagram. Like on Instagram. Yeah. Like I looked at Danny's Instagram the other day. I was scrolling through. I was just like, when's the last time I was on here? <laughs> How are you a single father? <laughs> what? <laughs> Make it make sense. <laughs> he posts a lot of like his music stuff. So like that's one. Like your, your Instagram's a lot of vile files. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. I was like, my boyfriend's not even on Instagram, but I make sure to like throw him in the feed every once in a while because I'm not a single lady, mm-hmm. you know, got to let them people out there know. Oh, my gosh. So I have not been hit on in quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, so um, I went to the grocery store last night. Typically, Nick is the grocery store um, in our runner in our family. But oh, you know is what? that why you I wanted just... to go grocery <laughs> no. shopping? No, I didn't know it was going to happen, Switch obviously. It up a little. Okay. So anyway, so I get out of the car and I'm in sweatpants and just a t-shirt and this man walks by and he goes, "Damn, you're comfy." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm straight chilling, you know, like definitely." And then he goes, "Wait a second, you're kind of cute. Take my number down." And I just went, "I'm married and I have a kid." <laughs> then he was like, "Oh shit." Like the look in his face was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." But for me to be like, "I literally have a child and I'm Married, almost married. That's all flex. So it you, felt good to say. Do you think yeah. it was the marriage or the child that scared him? <laughs> probably the child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, probably the child. Yeah. <laughs> probably the child. Me being like, I actually have a kid. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. I, I could have sworn I told you when I got home, but I must have forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Did you come back with the groceries? Yes, of course. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Did it feel good yes. to get hit on? Kind of, but it also kind of creeped me out the way that he was like, take my number down. Oh, like, sure. I mean, guys can be creepy. Yeah, it was definitely reminded me of like. That's not the first the, time a guy said that to you, I'm sure. And maybe it was just like the way he said it that kind of creeped me out. Oh, I think it's he? the starting into with the "damn, you're comfy," and it's like what? what and also like you're kind of cute. Take my number down. Kind of like, cute. He was, he was negging you. No, you shouldn't have. Thank you so much. Kind of cute. Isn't comfy like an insult too? Like no. when someone looks comfy. It's like when someone says, "Oh my god, you look so tired." Yeah, basically, like, yeah. Thanks, I guess. Yeah. Oh my god, are you sick? <laughs> no, apparently. Are you I'm feeling tired. okay? By the way, how do I look in pink today? You look good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I don't like no dark circles. Look, it doesn't look, <laughs> no make me look more tired. It's not accentuating his dark no. circles. Lindsay rates her sex life with Carl a 2.5 out of 10. For what rude old. Not- Good. What gives it the point five? I'm curious. <laughs> just a two. Just being nice. Well, I think the topper was that they just had sex and she said neither one of them came. And I go, how does that happen? How did neither one? Like, I can understand for the from Lindsay's, but Carl? I guess he was like, possible. all right. Is that, I, I just thought you guys have like a, a 98% success rate. Sure. The chances for women. 98%. 50. You know. But. When, when do you decide when to stop? Like just. Uh, yeah. Like tired. how long do you go on before you're like, all yeah. right, I guess this is not going to work for either one of us. <laughs> like when do you call it? It's like, all right, let's call it. It's, it's who I'll, gave up first, no, the person I'll, or the appendage. I'll, I'll tell you when. You guys know the answer. I actually don't. Don't. When, when you, you can't all, say hard. When you all give oh. us that look like. Oh. <laughs> like yeah. okay. The girl and the, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna? Is it gonna happen or not? Like, gonna, I'm I got like, right. somewhere to be. Honestly, no. You know, <laughs> when you get that look, like, are you gonna? Are you gonna? When you, when the performance ends and you guys just can't keep it up and you're like my back. When when you can sense the discomfort. It's kind of like, like, is it the pressure? Like the oh, I, no. I it's like long, It's like long breaths. Like. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Okay, another position. <laughs> sure. Like we can stop. Like let's put a pin in it. We'll circle back after dinner. Well, sometimes Change like locations. there's like a you you start in a weird position, you know, and then there's a lot of acrobatics. What's a weird position? Yeah, well, not a little weird. <laughs> are, you, position. are you doing handstands? <laughs> what are my positions that are weird? I'll make sure I note not, it down. Not, not weird, but like he's like, yeah. When Natalie gets on her head, it's definitely hard to. Uh... But the hot tub is not necessarily hot tub. Oh, good no. to know. Not going in there. <laughs> like, please come over for a hot tub night. You mean the sex tub? <laughs> I'll stay in the cold pool. Thank yeah, you. Anytime Nick's like, should we hot tub tonight? I'm like, am I in the mood <laughs> to hot tub? But also. <laughs> sex let me see also it's my it's we never talked about this but having sex after having a baby i 
like it's, it's going to be a challenge. It is. It is you. just logistically hard. It is because it, it's you have this little baby and, and it's, an, it's an angel. There's that. And she's like, obviously, always by our side. You know, prior to that, we had Nally's mom. And the best <laughs> we could have done would have been like, here, we're going to go into the, In the hot tub. That feels odd, <laughs> you know, and so we have we haven't got that comfortable with her mom yet. You know? But it is yeah. funny because we did conceive River with my mom in town. That was true. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. But we didn't have to like be like, hey, we're going to. So you've set boundaries. <laughs> yeah. It's just like River, it, it, it logistically, the spirit is there, but it's like logistically, it's, it's, we haven't quite cracked that code. But also Scott Disick said that having sex after Courtney had her baby, Mason, I guess, it was, um, the same living room furniture was just rearranged and i thought that was such oh. an interesting i'm like God, my mean? brain is like what what do you mean, does that mean? That kind of like makes the sense. anatomy that to, like having sex with her it was like it was the same right like same living room it was just you know the couch was up against the window now and then the oh, tv oh i was, see it was i wouldn't just say like that a little, you wouldn't say no normal what are we? What are we talking about Is here? He talking are we talking about? about are we talking about the whole living room? Or are we talking about like you tell me one piece of furniture? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> like <this>. I don't know. <laughs> I'm very confused. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Like, I'm like, I'm so sorry. What part of the house are we in? I don't know what's going to happen to me. I thought we were in the hot tub. <laughs> Which piece of furniture is now her I'm vagina? I'm taking like, it very literally. I'm just like, so did they renovate the ottoman? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait, you got new furniture for your no, house? No, I'm thinking like, fuck, she's trying to convince me to move, rearrange the furniture again. It's like, do we need to move? Now he's obsessed with doing. And like, while well, I love our house, we just, we don't, there's not a lot of options for rearranging No, I'm talking about the inside of my vagina. Oh, Is the furniture no. moved around? Not really. No. Okay, great. No. Well, great. That's all I want. And by <laughs> not really, I mean no. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. I wasn't like, how am I some... The, the walls have collapsed Same but different, you know? Like, <laughs> Wow, the paint color is different in here. <laughs> no. That's an interesting thing for Scott to say about Courtney. It yeah. is weird. Like, I would not be happy about that. <laughs> Sense memory on well, the tip? Well, I mean, you kind of like... I kind of would assume that it would not be the same. I mean, like, I, my yeah, I'll be honest, vagina I wasn't was really, 10 centimeters wide. And I wasn't really sure. Through. But I was just like, like old times. <laughs> no, for yeah. sure. I'm sure it, it it's different for many people. But to say that out loud. In well, it has got Well, <laughs> and we can take this out if you want, babe, because this is literally about your vagina. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be the beginning He's of like, this. Is it all. is the widest. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but literally right after River was born, Natalie's doctor uh, high fived me. Oh, Natalie. She said uh, I had a great pelvic floor. Yeah. And Did I didn't do even know what that means, but she said I was a lucky man and then gave me a, like a fist pump. Wow. Nice. That's what is She's like, chiller. that's what makes it tight or not. You know, when people have like, they can't like hold their pee mm -hmm. because their pelvic floor is like not weak. as weak. weak. Yeah. Oh, is that why and I peed when I sneezed the other day? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh that, no, it's probably because you have a baby pushing against yeah, your bladder. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. How is, how, may I ask, how is pregnancy going for you? It's may great. I? So far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> May I ask? That was so nice. That was polite. Yeah. Was Thank you for asking. Her body, her choice. You know, like, <laughs> period. How is your living room? My my living room is real good right now. So I'm like, oh, really? Scared for what you're Have talking you, about? No, no, no. Have you taken a mirror to it? Because that's what's terrified no, me. No, I can't see anything. I okay. actually was getting ready for Coachella and I had to call Danny into the bathroom and I was just like, I need you to help me because I can't see anything down there Aww. and I need help. <laughs> So With he helped what? you. Well, shaving. I didn't. I don't know why I'm asking this question. <laughs> <laughs> We're all curious, but yeah, no, I just needed some help. Yeah, absolutely. I I wanted to go that route too, but I don't think I don't think Nick was very interested. I, I like you know business and pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> keep it separate. Well, I'm happy to hear that you guys have a great sex life post baby. Thank you. But you know who doesn't? Brittany and Jax. Oh my god. Also, Jesse and uh, Michelle. And what's the common theme? <laughs> Bravo. Okay. Terrible husbands. <laughs> Terrible men. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Terrible. Uh, Brittany said that her and Jax have only had sex like twice in the past year, and their kids too. So what do we think about that? And Brittany called herself the old tumbleweed. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. 
So she's, she's rolling. She's, she's so, so oh funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is a f- <laughs> what is a tumbleweed? Like, like, is that like, thing on the freeways? That yeah. like, no, like, no, like westerns. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> what does a new yeah. one look like versus an old one? Green. Green. In the ground. <laughs> Green. Yeah, one is like... I guess tumbleweeds are old by default. <laughs> I mean, first, I'm, re- I'm always ready to rip on Jax, but if she's describing herself as the old tumbleweed... Oh, no, she, she wants... Said she feels like an old yeah. tumbleweed. Yeah, she Jax wants... makes her feel that way? Is yes. That... Okay, all right. So it's Jax... Jack's fault. Okay, well, fine. Jax also said that he that it's lacking in intimacy. He feels like they need to schedule it. Your sex life and marriage kind of take a backseat when you have kids. Well, I'm do so they? sorry. Are you checking your schedule <laughs> for hot tub time? <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm like, oh, can't no, relate. <laughs> no, Steve. So I'm so sorry to segue, but Steve got fixed. <gasps> oh, he got his balls dropped off yesterday. What is today? I don't know. This week. And while I was taking him there, he was obviously very disheveled. He was in the car seat, sitting in River's car seat. He was very oh scared. God. It's like he knew. He was all loopy. No, no this yet. is oh, going. Oh, this is going. Oh. oh no. Yes, yes. And I was like, he will not. He will not do good with a cone on his head like this. I just I can't do that to him. So I ordered him one of those little onesies. Oh, yes. But it's also extremely you have to like undo it every time they go outside to use the rat. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot of moving parts. Well, apparently he, as Suge said, who is our lovely, lovely friend and nanny, um, she said that he sold himself. And so soiled. She was like, what can I put on him? Like his onesies like covered in pee. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, do we have any clothes? I'm like, maybe Nick's underwear. Uh, I don't know. Like, is there anything we can put? And then she just did a picture. Of- River's diaper? <laughs> she put a <gasps> diaper on. I'm like, wait, that's actually genius. That's kind of adorable. And did she, she have to hole? cut a hole? And she cut a hole. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so cute. You have to get him the cones that are like pillows. Like it blows up with air, so then they <gasps> like it. Like that's yeah. the solution. Because then they'll like lay down with it instead of having this like plastic. Wait, I had no idea that was a mm-hmm. thing. Me either. Yeah. Oh my God. Big dogs love them. Big dogs love them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, adding that to my cart. <laughs> well, why, what, it, it, why is Courtney Love talking all this shit about uh, everyone? She's talking shit about Taylor Swift. Uh, Courtney Love, uh, formerly married to Kurt Cobain. Do you even know who Courtney Love is, babe? I feel like I do. Hmm. Do you? Of course I do. Okay. Do you, Justin? <laughs> no clue. Oh my god. Leia? <laughs> really? <laughs> and your husband's in the music industry. I you know. don't know who Courtney Love is? I know who Kurt well, Cobain is. Well, I've heard is. her name. I know who Kurt Cobain is for sure. I've heard her name. Courtney I just Love don't... Uh, was Kurt Cobain's wife. Yeah. Um, she is an actor. She was a. Uh... She's a musician. Sure. Oh. Yeah. What anyway, according to her, Taylor Taylor is not important. <laughs> okay. Um, to her or she just says Taylor is not important also I, I saw a stat that uh, 17% of the population will vote for whoever Taylor Swift says they're going to vote for the elections for the election I believe which Taylor that seems pretty she important ran for president yeah no she said she so might that's be- just like at- Factually inaccurate. She's important to a lot of people. She said she's not interesting as an artist, which is definitely a personal opinion and definitely something she should have kept to herself. But also she says in the same quote that she's probably the Madonna of now and Madonna is an icon. Madonna is so an like, icon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like No, she says she's probably the Madonna of now. Like she's like begrudgingly like I mean she's probably But like, even then that is choice. an epic comparison. No, yeah, I know. I wish I was the Madonna of my time. <laughs> probably. <laughs> right. Like she's She's talking shit about both of them at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> now every successful woman is cloned. So there is just too much music. They're all the same. Talking about Taylor, Beyonce, and Lana Del Rey. I feel like those are very different <laughs> artists. Couldn't also, be more so. all incredible artists. Also, yeah. I love so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel bad because I'm sure the Swifties will be after Miss Courtney Love. Yeah, she must have known that this was going to happen, though. Yeah, I mean, like, it seems like she did it on purpose. You know what? We are talking about, it was the first time we've ever talked about Courtney Love on this mm-hmm. show. Well, it's the first time I've talked about Courtney Love. It's the first time in my life. Yeah. ever heard <laughs> her name. So there you go. Uh, one thing we haven't even talked about yet, which we kind of thought we were going to last Reality Recap, and actually we'll get into it more next week on Reality Recap, uh, because one of our very special guests is going to be returning to the show, Kate Arthur of Variety, who is very deep in Housewives, specifically the Housewives of Salt Lake City. But the response to the Monica episode has oh, been yes. fascinating. We, mm-hmm. uh, we have received 
so many bizarre messages from the people of Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. We won't even get into who and why and how and what people are sending us, but we it's like we activated the city of Salt Lake City. Like bad stuff? Good stuff are all over the board yeah, stuff. You know, there's a, a lot of it was people trying all of, all over the board. Yeah. Um, some of it was people trying to let us know that they think Monica's still lying. I don't know what your all takeaways were. Um, I don't know if I totally believe everything Monica said. You know, it's like I will say her casting story is still a bit fishy. You know, based the, and I, when the one I'm talking about is when she basically alleged that she had told these two random casting producers that she was in fact involved with reality of and then somehow coincidentally those two casting producers just like fell off the face of this earth while also not sharing that bit of information and yet somehow they did pass monica's information along to whoever would have eventually casted her that doesn't quite track i just assume that the cease and desist that she talked about that was public record that i believe that was from jailbird with uh, Jen Shaw. Jen Shaw. Um, <laughs> I mean, was made sense. a bit of a smoking gun, you know, in terms of like, you know, here all of these nosy ladies are, especially the women of Salt Lake City, seem like they're really receipts. very good at receipts timeline, like yeah. sleuthing, investigating, getting up in each other's shit. And it's just like, here's this public document. They talk about how they're so triggered about who, about from reality von Teese, you would think that all these women would try to figure out who in fact is and then you have this public record i think kate arthur who is going to be on uh, uh on reality recap has some things to say about that but i guess my big takeaway is i don't know if i believe everything monica said but i don't think everything she says is a lie and like is she that less believable than any of these other women on this show like i don't know like most of these women's personas are manufactured to present themselves to the public in a certain way. And they have their skeletons in the closet that they would like to keep. And usually by season two, season three, these things come out. But I'm like, Monica was one of the first housewives I've ever seen. That was like her first season was like, hey, by the way, excommunicated from the church. I cheated with my brother-in-law. And it was just like, whoa, usually we have to uncover this stuff two years later. So I was like, she's also very forthcoming, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and who knows? I don't know. Like, I wouldn't necessarily... Uh, put my life on the line to say that, you know, Monica is the beacon of truth. Maybe she told her version of the truth, or maybe she's lying through her teeth. I don't know. But yeah, I will say after sitting down with Monica, I, I'd be curious to see what other, these other ladies say. But I guess my biggest takeaway is Bravo fucked up and she should be on next season. <laughs> For sure. She's like, 100%. she's, if nothing else, excellent television. Amazing. Amazing television. television. She's very compelling. She's really sweet too. Like in person, she, she was so very nice. She was, she was, and yeah. she had an answer for. I mean, you mentioned this. She had an answer for everything. And it, the one cast again, other than the casting one, that was a bit. Uh, that was bull. Uh, that seemed like bullshit. You think so? Are we going to debate it on Rowdy Recap? Yeah, we, we'll okay. debate it more with Kate. Yeah. But I, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible, but likely, no, it doesn't. It, it seems like she kind of made up that answer. Hmm. Crystal Minkoff is no longer going to be uh, the the Real House. We're getting information on the Real House of of, of uh, Beverly Hills. Oh, yes, yeah. Crystal. Was... Okay, so it's confirmed. Crystal is leaving. So it's Anne Marie and own, Crystal. Uh, Anne Marie was fired. Crystal left on her own. So who's replacing both of them? Do, is, is it there... confirmed she left on her own? I don't know that it is. I don't think she did. Or did I she heard. Tell you? I think for, she was for... released. That's and, what... and Crystal was like, "I would, I'll gladly take the time to myself." That's. I'm pretty sure she made a statement. On her social media, what that she, she went, she wanted to focus on her family and yeah. like her her it children. Was, basically. It was bittersweet, is what she said. But that doesn't mean she didn't leave on her own accord, does it? Well, insiders are saying that they they don't want her back because they feel she has done all she can do on the show and she no longer has much to add to the drama. So another contract has not been offered. So we have that on that side, and then we have Crystal's side too. Hmm. Yeah, but it's not like an Anne Marie exit where she had a whole essay. So <laughs> oh Anne God. Marie is now <laughs> fighting. Fake with accounts. a uh, a Christo Minkoff parody account. Oh, bummer. <laughs> mm -hmm. She doesn't realize it was a, not Crystal. Yeah. She was like tweeting at a fake Crystal account thinking yeah. it was Crystal. <laughs> oh, Which no. is kind of amazing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really she not only tweeted though, she blocked the account. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> she took it personal. Yeah. Who do we think? Uh, is Kathy Hilton going to come back? I think she needs to. Kathy, Teddy, and Denise haven't teased. And uh, Kim, Kim, yeah. And Kim, Kim yeah. yeah. So I think the, all of the sisters are going to make a reunion. Denise might do it, and I think Teddy 
unfortunately. It would coming. save the show. Why Teddy, unfortunately? Like, I love Teddy as a person, but I don't think she brought much to the cast. Besides I'm being with, a friend. I'm with you, too. Yeah. Or I was like, the drama was just unnecessary. Like, she was almost too sweet, but then she would... She kind of had this angle where she was like... She's like a life advice coach or something. Uh -huh. so, so she was like, I'm very transparent. Like, I speak my truth. But then she did the opposite. I think it needs to be Denise. Yeah, I agree. Did you see April's comment under um, Teresa's post? I did. Is like wild. I on it. We had April on. We did. She was very vocal. I honestly you could tell feel she like hated Gary. Then you absolutely could. I feel like we could text her and be like, "Babe, please tell us, tell us everything." She commented and said, "I wish you the very best. I truly tried to tell you, but this was your lesson to experience. Much love." Oof. This Boy. was your lesson. She fucking hates Teresa and Gary. Like I want. I, I, I wonder what that means. I truly tried to tell you. Tried to tell you what? That he was Not like. Not to marry Gary. Yeah. <gasps> when? Like, I guess after the show. I think April knew Gary was a creep from the get. Mm. You think she just came on for the plot? No, I mean, I think she came on for the experience like they all did. And then mm -hmm. she met Gary oh. and was like, no. Maybe not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that tracks. I can see that. It is interesting how quickly this marriage lasted. Did I say ended. That weirdly? Dissolved. Ended. Yeah. Ended. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, lasted. Yeah. Oh, what about the pregnant Jenna Dewan seeking millions from ex Shannon Tatum's Magic Mike income? Yeah, Jenna Dewan, they've been divorced for how long? A long time, because he's been with Jesse J. She's been, she's, she's mar no, remarried he's and been has a with, kid. No, he's been with... She was, he was with Jesse. I mean, they've been divorced that long. He yeah. had a long relationship long with, rel with, I think, Jesse J. The singer? He's now... Kravitz. Yeah. Oh! <gasps> yeah, what He's now engaged to... Kravitz. Let's <laughs> call her Kravitz. Did him and Jesse have a kid together? Zoe? Zoe. No. Zoe Kravitz. Kravitz. Joey Kravitz. Zoe. He did, Zoe. I don't believe he had a kid with Jesse. Jesse J. Okay. Jenna Dewan is remarried and has a kid with her new husband. Right. Um, but she wants that magic mic money. It came out during their marriage. It should be considered community in character. How much did he make from that? Lots. What? Millions. And they did the Vegas show. He made fo a, f a fortune. Yeah, his to his magic Mike empire because I, I think he was like a executive producer, like co creator. I kind of want to rewatch that. And they did three uh, movies, they right? Did three movies. According to Forbes, Channing made sixty million in earnings between June twenty twenty twelve and June twenty thirteen, mostly thanks to Magic Mike. That so was it's just, just one, one year movie. Just yeah. one year. But like, what is she? So she's claiming because they were together at the time. But it, the does she have she's... stake in the movie? No, but she helped generate that money. I guess she supported him while he was. You know, she stayed home with her the kids. She's like, yeah, hey, good job. I don't know. That's... I mean, I might have a hot take, but I'm like, A, if you didn't ask for that in divorce filings and whatnot, how are we coming back years later asking for a piece of that pie? Yeah, how is this coming out just now? Did she like just I don't Google? Know. Like, I also heard something Tatum about... Worth and she's like, Channing Fuck. Tatum's net worth. <laughs> yeah. Like, it does seem odd, but uh, you can sue anyone at any time. So I guess there is that, you know. Sure. Or maybe it hasn't been settled. Sometimes the court systems take a long time i don't part of what it is is jenna's legal team is claiming that channing created a complex web of L llc's holding companies and partnerships to dilute the earnings like they failed to disclose so oh. she's basically retroactively being like they didn't report it properly oh. is what it is and probably because he was like i don't want to give this person any money that i made i mean i guess but like if he didn't disclose it and she's like wait what the fuck like you made this much money you didn't tell me and it Again, are we going through the accounting years later? Why? As Sutton said, you need to get yourself like an analyst when you do the divorce. <laughs> she had a word for it. There's like a word for the title of someone that goes through all the finances and like investigates it so you don't run into this later. Sutton should write a book she about should. like how to And she did it successfully. What is she getting? Uh, she's getting what, a million dollars a month or some shit? 300K a month or something like yeah. that. After yeah. taxes, she After said. Taxes. So that's like 600,000. Yeah, she really needs to write. A, she needs to like start like a consulting business on like, I can help Divorces. you. Look what I can do for you. <laughs> and she did that. It's also like Ariana going through and like itemizing the furniture and everything i'm like it, it makes sense it, for the future for a, yeah. a clean break i yeah. mean that makes sense but i feel like after the fact is a little uh little questionable mm. oh, so are we team Shan shanning or team jenna team the truth by I default of not knowing yeah, yeah by not knowing enough details yeah I, you guys are no fun at the <laughs> moment I, i'll say team channing because i know don't the know truth is, you all want to say channing you're afraid to say it i just said it well okay, yeah <laughs> 
Like, does she need the money? Like, first. if she needs the money, then yeah, right? Does yeah. she, though? No. I don't know. I mean, yeah. that's all relative. You yeah, know? that's true. She's just like, well, I want some of that m- millions. Like, So do I. I'm guessing she's, she's, I'm guessing <laughs> she's, she's like, crushing life. She seems like she's thriving. But if he means 60 million in one year, I don't know how much she's asking for, but I feel like if he gave her five, it wouldn't really hurt his bank account. That's true. <laughs> right? Like, they, it must be, they got to go to court for this. Like, can you just settle, just it, settle like, it out of court? <laughs> just be like, listen, I'll give you five million if you shut up. And I would be like, oh my God, five million. Okay, Do they have children? They have oh, one yeah. daughter together. Give it to the daughter. Yeah, just give it all to the daughter. Give her a college fund. I'm sure yeah. Channing's like, you know what? I got her. She's good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm sure he pays child support. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure they're And I don't think Jenna is, is, this is about Jenna wanting the money. He's like, da- fine, I'll give it to her daughter. She's like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Say, no, no, no. She's not old enough. Yeah. Yeah. I'll hold it until she can have it. Mm. All right. Well, that about wraps it up. Uh, coming up uh, next week, we got an incredible episode of Ask Nick. We uh, got Joy, Brian, and like I said, Kate Arthur from Variety to help us break down reality recap. And then going deeper, another fantastic guest that can't wait to share with you all. It's going to be wild. Let's get the gurdy. Zoa, you got to check out Zoa. Dwayne, the Rock Johnson's energy drink. Zoa just launched a brand new campaign. It's all about the BDE, Big Dwayne Energy. They have got a really awesome new commercial that you can check out at Zoa's Instagram or YouTube channel. Zoa Energy is a better for you energy drink with great taste, electrolytes, B and C vitamins, and zero sugar. It's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash. When you drink Zoe Energy drinks, it gives you the big Dwayne energy, which gives you the swag, confidence, and energy to help you conquer your day. Here at the Vile Files, my team has loved Zoe to give them the extra boost to get through their days with ingredients that enhance energy levels. Zoe Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation. They've got eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape which happens to be one of my team's favorites, along with the delicious cherry limeade. So get yourself some big Dwayne energy and order Zoa Energy today. Available online and at stores near you. Find out where you can find it at zoaenergy.com and find retailers like Amazon 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. Why? Hinge gives you a sense of someone's personality and lets you share your own. You get to know potential dates through their unique answers to prompts. Plus, get a sense of someone's dating intentions and what they are looking for. I was just talking about Hinge last night when I was at dinner because I was saying how much I'm enjoying all of their different filters and just like the quality of people that you can meet on Hinge. I am currently talking to someone and we're going back and forth about like different trips we want to take and different trips we have on the calendar. And he was like, do you have room for one more? Like your family sounds great. So we'll see. All right. What's his, uh, he's got some good prompts. He has like a two truths and a lie. He has a poll on there. He said, pick the best one, the office friends or new girl. So that would be a fun way to start talking about your favorite shows. The amount of love stories hinge our makings is limitless. Because it's the app designed to be deleted. On Hinge, there are no rules, timers, or games. You're fe- if you're feeling inspired, give Hinge a try. Download Hinge today and find someone worth deleting the app for. Rocket Money! Rocket Money is the personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills so you can grow your savings. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all the app's features. I myself have saved over $1,000 a year. We all know that we have apps on our phone that we have downloaded our spending money that we're not using and we don't even know what's going on. Well, let Rocket Money identify those apps and get them canceled for you to stop wasting money on things that you are not using so you can use money on things that you need. In addition to helping you delete apps that you don't need, they also will negotiate and lower your bills. That's right, Rocket Money will even try to negotiate and lower your bills for you up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. If al- I mean, that alone makes Rocket Money worthwhile. So let Rocket Money help you organize and track your spending, monitor your spending, and again, delete those unwanted and non-used subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Gertie, welcome. Welcome to me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. How you been? Amazing. Celebrating life every day of the, the week. You look stunning. 
Thank you, darling. Yeah. It does. It's the lashes. It's like double, triple eyelashes, darling. Double, triple. Now that I ain't got no hair, I got to make sure I look like a bitch. I'm like, yeah, I am a girl. She's a girl. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I've seen hair. You look like, are you keeping it short or are you growing it you up? You get the exclusive that I am keeping it this way. <gasps> Listen to me, when I did the calculations on how much time and money I spent on the hair, wigs and all that crap, and then I showed it to Russell, Russell was like, oh, yeah, no, 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 we, we're going to abort that mission. I love you just the way you are. I love you. You're beautiful. You're kind. Yeah. <laughs> you're Important. special. And so, yeah, we're keeping it. It's official. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Are you used to it? Right now? A hundred percent. When I wear a wig now, it's like, I feel like shit. Whoa, what is this? Like I I was bald already when I was doing the end part of the confessionals. And so I had to put back a wig to like, based on the timeline. And I swear Russell like would freak out and my kids too. So it's like, yeah. And now it's like part of our foreplay. I mean, yes. Okay. A a little head rub. You know, (laughs) won't hurt anybody. (laughs) New kinks. (laughs) There you go. You build build them as you go. 28 years later, we better come up with new ones. (laughs) (laughs) And don't mind the fan, by the way. I get hot flashes. Okay, so we just, don't mind. It's all part of my uh, journey. I yes. like to call it. This is post chemo, uh, surgical, menopause, kinks. All of the okay. above. <laughs> the fan is a new king too. <laughs> and if 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 I can ask, where are we on the journey? I mean, how how has treatment been going? Yeah. I know these things obviously can be hard to talk about, so we appreciate you just opening up in general. But you know, where are you on in your health journey? What's the prognosis? Yeah. How are you feeling? Listen, you have to laugh at it at the, at the end of the day, to be honest, and you make joke, jokes and light about it. I'm at the end of the tunnel. We saw the light and we're in the light now. And so we're shining bright and I'm done with um, all the treatments. I'm cancer free, which Yay! is amazing. Yeah, love. And I had my six months mammogram ultrasound and that came out cancer free again. So it's a six month process. Every six months I get tested. And so it's literally holding your breath. But I don't live by the six month benchmark. I live every day like it's the best day ever and that's how you have to do it that's incredible Mm -hmm. um what have you learned about yourself while going through this obviously very difficult process because i'm Mm -hmm. sure there's there must have been a lot of self-reflection throughout this period yeah there was a lot of lonely dark times in that bed during the chemo for sure um but you know i learned to really appreciate myself and the people around me and Learn to trim my tribe, by the way, because, you know, your tribe is your vibe. And so I realized a lot of shit was not serving me and you got to release what no longer serves you. Yeah. So that's what I did. And I'm really selfish now. So I'm a selfish bitch. I'm like, no, learn how to say no, no. Thank you. But no, thank you. <laughs> w no for you. <laughs> See you later. So, yeah, it is what it is. And it ain't what it ain't. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. How has it affected your, your relationship with your husband? In the best way. So now I've been... Re- We're high school sweethearts. We've been together for 28 years in total, married 22. I thought I knew this man like the back of my hand. When I got diagnosed with cancer, a new man showed up that I didn't even even know that I needed. And he stepped up to a level that is almost godly, to be honest. And I just don't even have the words to describe it till this day. I don't even know how to put it into words. And I'm more in love with him now than I've ever been before. I find him hotter now. Like everything that he did without even me uttering a word, I'm like, damn, that's my man. <laughs> you and when Russell he walks in, When he walks in the door, I'm like, I would. And I still would. <laughs> and I do. And I love. Yeah, it's intense. Our love is very weird and intense. I know you talked a lot about uh, at the reunion about the importance, obviously, of being getting screened, especially when mm-hmm. it comes to women of color. Uh, yeah. obviously that was a big, you know, focus on on the awareness behind that and and how many women don't do proper screening. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, you know, what can you share of anything you learned as someone who is surviving this um, diagnosis? Yeah. Advice to any women out there, or especially women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer, who are looking, you know, to you or anyone for any types of inspiration right. or just even maybe like. You know, tips or tricks, you know, like, you know, Natalie I mean, and I just had a baby and we're, right. we're looking about like what's out there. What's what's good information? What did you find helpful? Mm-hmm. What would what did you find not so helpful as you kind of went into this? Well, process? to be honest, I felt like um, going through all this journey, I, di- I decided to do it 
on my own and not look left or right for other people's advices. So one thing I actually try to pipe down is opinions. So I honestly kind of like took a step back from like my mom. Oh, you got to drink this tea. This tea cures cancer. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> if it cured cancer, your ass would be a billionaire. So yeah. please step back and stand down, soldier. Like it was really honestly for me, like I had to do this on my own and in my own terms. And I grasped what I wanted from different roots, right? So that's the first thing. Um, secondly is that one thing with cancer that people act like it's like you have the plague and like people go into hiding. So you won't even know. But in this building alone, there's probably five people who have cancer or going through treatment and they show in and they come in and out of consciousness is what I like to call it. And so for me to share this was a big deal. I knew it was a big deal. I made the conscious decision to do it because no, no one else did it before. And I'm like, this timing, why is cancer happening now? Why is it happening right before, right when I'm about to start filming? Everything about it was kind of like pointing to you are being tapped on the shoulder to do this. And I couldn't deny that. And I just did it. And Russell stood by me with it. And um, I don't regret a thing. I think that this is actually a great thing. We are saving lives every single minute of the day. The DMs that I get are literally like, I was never going to go because I've, I'm scared. And I went and I was diagnosed and now I'm getting treatment. But thank God is caught early because of you. I'm counting. We were at 300 when the reunion filmed. I'm at 403 right now. Yeah. So bitch is busy. So did you find a lump? <laughs> yeah. Did you feel a lump or did no. you just get screened? I was going all the time. So I seven years going into screenings all the time. So this was my annual. I went in and they saw density, calcification. Let's do an MRI. Let's do an ultrasound, all that stuff. And the next thing you know, it was one, two tumors, one non-invasive. And then the second one was the invasive one hiding behind the non-invasive one. So it was only when I did my MRI that they found it and they were like, Thank God we saw it because the invasive one was the, the, the problem. Yeah. So I'm very, very lucky. So you were going in for six years just getting screened. I yeah. feel like that's extremely rare. Like women, yeah. for some reason, we just we don't do it. Well, so I, what? I am 46. What? So I was 40 when I went. <laughs> uh, yeah. But you have to go in even earlier now. Now yeah. that it's detecting that it's getting, you know, sooner and sooner. Something is not right in the world and we need to figure out what it is. Is it in the water? Is it the chemicals that we put in our hair? Is it what we're eating? Is it what we're breathing? So I've been dibbling and dabbling on all that. And honestly, now I'm in a whole entrepreneurial track and I have partnered with a water company honestly, which is alkaline hydrogen water. Okay. See, it's the top of the line because I'm like, if my body's going to be made up of almost of, of all water, I want to make sure I'm bringing, you know, drinking the best for sure. So yeah. You're yeah. 46. I'm fucking 46. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say about black don't cry. Yeah. And my mom is one, like she had seven children. I'm number six of seven. And that lady looks good. So, Ooh. you know. And, yes. You know, and the water that drink doesn't It's in the water. <laughs> Can we talk about Larsa? Sure, why not? We could talk about anything and everybody if love, you want to. Love. Talk so to me. obviously you two were pretty tight. We were friends. Yeah. Are we still friends? <laughs> we'll see. The future looks bright, right? We hugged it out at the reunion. Like where are we today? Today we're we're decent. There's no bad blood at all. I have to Really? Because I at the reunion, 100%. I was like... Yeah, that was intense, right? Mm -hmm. Made me hate her for you. No. If but, I were you, I would, you know. Well, did you see the last reunion, part three, is where we literally, like, we're trying to start fresh. You know, and I said to her when she says, hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, you know, it's show and tell at this point. You have to show me who you are. And because the person I thought you were was not, uh, not in my circle of trust type of person. So right now, we're starting fresh. We'll see what happens. I'm the kind of person, I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Right. But when I start fighting, I will fucking, you know, blow up the spot. So I, I like to be on the nice, girty side and listen to the angel on this shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I would have been really pissed if, yeah, you know, well, not only did she go was. around <laughs> yeah. telling everyone about mm -hmm. your diagnosis, yeah. and then she played dumb when you confronted her at the reunion. Mm -hmm. She acted like she was the victim because she didn't call TMZ and tell them about your diagnosis or spread it all over the internet. I mean, mm -hmm. it must be frustrating to have gone through something so personal and so scary mm -hmm. And not know what's in store for you, needing your support system yeah. more than ever, and to have someone you think yeah. is a friend make that uh, moment right. about them and victimize themselves, and then accuse you of weaponizing your own cancer diagnosis. I mean, it's intense. Yeah. Listen, we can't take back what happened. It's all out there. It's it's it, it is what it is. And what I told her at the reunion is that, you know, my my journey was hard already and you made it harder. And I meant it 
and it is what it is. It's a fact. I went into deciding to share my journey because I wanted to then maybe show how it is because I never saw it on screen ever. I'm looking for pictures of black people and radiation burns. How does it look? Is it that bad? I can't find that one picture. So I said to myself, if 42% black people are dying more than their counterpart, I need to be the beacon of hope to show that, hey guys, stop hiding. This is what it is. It's okay. You can come out of this alive and healthy. I wanted to share my real life story. I didn't want to, I didn't want to storyline my life. So that's the blind spot that I didn't see coming. Literally was like, you see my face at this luncheon that we're having and where we're trying to like make things right. And she's like, don't start crying. And I'm like, wait, we're trying to make things right. Are you telling me what to, what, what? No. And it goes off course from there. So it is what it is. What happened, happened. Unfortunately for her, you know, there's, there's, it's all on tape, right? And nothing was edited to make anybody look a certain way. But I think that where we are today is that, you know, we have to grow from this. We can't stay stuck in the shit. You know what I mean? I don't like to sit in my shit and I want to move forward and, 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 and greener pastures. So for me, it's kind of like, show me who you are. If you're not the person that I see you as, show me who you are then. And hopefully it's for the better. Who do you think she is today? Like, how would you, if you were to describe Lars's character, how would you describe it? Well, I think that, you know, there's a lot of uh, history with her and her past. I think that maybe she's trying to redeem these days, you know. And so, you know, and she met Marcus and the two of them have a history from the, just the family names alone. So she's got her own thing to worry about. And I got my own thing to worry about. So let's just do you boo-boo. But you can answer the question. What is the question? How would you describe Larsa's character? Her character? Yeah. I think that Larsa is a very sensitive person. Very sensitive. And I think that she holds on to the... She plays checkers. You know, when she should be playing chess. That's how I'll say it. And so holding on to the little BS thing is, I think, preventing her from seeing the end goal. And it's, it's, it's just kind of like um, she's throwing her own breaks on the road when she's she could be much bigger what do you think are some character traits she needs to work on to have listening (laughs) i tell her that all all the time by the way so she knows this i'm always like listen if you listen to me you heard me say don't tell anybody i only told you you're the fourth person to know and in confidence and that's definitely i think um something that she should work on i mean we all have our little you know tbd list all right of the things that we can do better Mm -hmm. Do you actually think she's capable of being the friend you need her to be so that you can have the actual, like the type of friendship you thought you had? Not everybody is going to be your best friend. And you have to realize that, that you don't need sure. people to like you. You don't need to be everybody's friend. But I, she, she was, it seemed like. We were friends and friendly, not so much best friends. I think that, you know, two, two scenes together editing, you know, and, and by the way, we're, we're all friends in the cast, right? We're all friends in the cast. There's different gradients. Like me and Nicole, that's my sister. Kiki is my girl. Like, you know, we have different grades and, and levels of friendship. Larsa and I were getting close. You know why? Because if you don't, if you, I think you guys forgot that actually season three reunion, she was mad at Nick, at Aunt Lisa for not sticking up for her for when she was arguing with Adriana. She was mad at uh, Alexia and Marisol for some little things that they said behind closed doors at the reunion. So she really looked around and said, OK, well, let me try Gertie as a friend. And that's how our re- relationship started. And so then when she got back close with the other girls, I think is when it was kind of like you know, our relationship kind of fizzled a little bit. And then came who's the fakest of them all. By the way, it was a page six live podcast in New York. It was literally a fire like chat it was a quick questions who is the fake who's the fakest the key word here is fake est est i have fake boobs we're all a little so, fake bitch <laughs> I, and i don't care who knows it but when they say fakest we're gonna have to remember like you know before and after and it, it is what and that was it it was nothing to it next question and it just dragged on for way too long and that's what i'm what i'm saying about checkers versus chess it's like girl let's move on right bigger fish or fry marcus mm. her what, what what her what, what how boyfriend. was your boyfriend okay or, they, were, they were broken up a week ago on so couple, headlines couple, said. A couple weeks ago <laughs> And then they were back that's a, or, or doing the the Super Bowl halftime show. If that's a fascinating <laughs> relationship. I uh, what? Well, how do you? What do you make? Fascinating. Of it? You, you said. don't. You don't think so? Fascinating. 
it's it's an interesting relationship, obviously, because of the dynamics and the history with yeah. the mm-hmm. family name. It sucks, by the way, because my husband is the number one Michael Jordan fan. Like, when I tell you that man has like 60 pairs of Michael Jordan. <laughs> I'm like, number two if he's right? number one. <laughs> there yeah. you go. So Russell is still rocking to this day. Every day is like a different pair or whatever. Like, we love Michael Jordan. And we love Scottie Pippen, the history, the Bulls. And it sucks that, you know, there there's the fizzle to this friend relationship um, because they're both great men. And now when you hear the word Jordan and you when you hear the word Pippen, it's not a, really the first thing that goes to is not no longer the players. It's like the people that they're family with. I just, you know, just respect the last names is all I'm saying. Like, you know, let's keep the legacy going. Yeah, I definitely feel like I think of you know? Larsa Pippen more whenever yeah, I yeah. hear Pippen. Do you think Marcus is doing a good job of keeping the legacy going? It's like, listen, I came from reality TV. Yeah. You're on re- reality yep. TV. I'm I'm not knocking it, but like Michael Jordan's son could have been anything. Big pressure, man. But all he wants to do is be a housewife's boyfriend. It listen. seems like it, it seemed desperate to he wanted to be a part of the reunion <laughs> so bad. I just I you know He said, put me out there, give me a chair. <laughs> he, he and I'm did. just like I just aim aim higher, Marcus. You know? He like, said, I'm gonna talk from the green room. Mm-hmm. Put a camera on me. Put a camera on me. Mm. Oh, I, 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 and, and just like, again, like I'm sure Larsa has probably wonderful qualities, but just like of all the people you could be in a relationship with, dating the ex of your dad's former teammate, it, it just, it seems messier than it needs or should be. And then their relationship, Marcus and Larsa's relationship in itself seems really messy. I just, I don't know. I'm just curious as someone who kind of has a, a, a front row seat to that relationship. One what do you thing, make of it? One thing that I will never do is say they shouldn't be together because of X, Y, and Z. Because guess what? Somebody may look at me and Russell saying, oh, this black girl shouldn't be with this white guy. So I, I base everything on that note where if you like it, I fucking love it for you. That's what it is. And love is love no matter how you look at it. If you look at it from that perspective, I don't care what the the relationship kinks are. If they really love each other, they're going to be together. And you got to respect that grind. Do you think there's some, do you think real, there's real love there? Oh, you should see them together. I definitely think that they have love. They have love for each other. There's love there. So that's you, you support them. I support love. And I think that if that's what they're doing and, and at the reunion, all I wanted to say is like, just acknowledge that it's just awkward. Like one thing I, I don't want is why was people he there? to pretend that everything's fine. And what are you guys bitching about or talking about? We're talking about it because it's awkward. Just say, yeah, you know what? We are struggling because Michael Jordan doesn't want to really meet me. And we're going through those kinks. Like, be real and be raw. If you're that, I think actually if Larsa were to say, damn, guys, let me tell you what I'm dealing with. Boom, 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 boom. But the love is so real and hard that we're still fighting for that. People would be like. Michael, but, Michael won't meet her. No, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, apparently there was a whole thing with, like, you know, did he meet? Does he approve of her? Or have they met before? And she said no. Um, but the fact is that if she acknowledges that she's going through things like every other person in the world, I think she'll be more relatable that way. So, you know, I want that for her. But it's when you try to act like everything's fine and everything's perfect. And why is everybody asking? Like, let's not do that. Or know? the deflection. And, you, and then you're on a platform where you're supposed to share. So please share. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right? What do you think? I think you're being a little cagey. Yeah. No, I, I'm being real. <laughs> I agree with you because I'm like, I think she has an issue with deflecting. So it's like, instead of just like when something gets right. presented to her, she, right. instead of being like, yeah, that is going on in my life. And this is how I feel about exactly. that. She goes, absolutely not. Not true. And also three years ago, you and you're like, well, that's not relevant. And it there would be so go. much more relatable if you just were honest. There you go. Boom. I have a question for yeah. you, too. With everything uh, going on this year, because I can't remember if it was an earlier episode, but there was a backyard party. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I think you just recently been diagnosed yep. and you excused yourself from all of the drama. It was like between Lisa yep. and Alexia. Mm-hmm. Was it tough for you while going through everything that you're going through and trying to like handle your health and everything, like being around that type of energy? Like, did you find it difficult to film or to commit? No, because it was kind of escapism from the doctor's appointment, from the treatments, from the MRIs, all that stuff. So for me, it was like, oh my God, wait, wait, there's a party we're filming. I'm there. Right. I wanted to have that normalcy. And the problem, I guess, for me is that I don't lead with like 
Hey guys, I'm Debbie Downer here and I'm going to have surgery tomorrow. And that's where people think I'm weaponizing because I'm trying to walk in to say, I think about it tomorrow. Right. right. So I had just found out on the ride over to that party, oh, which was Marisol's on um, luncheon, that I was going to need a second surgery. This is like four days after my first surgery. Right. So I'm like, OK, uh, OK, let me just do shelf it. And then when I walk in and then you have Lisa walking in and she's ready. She literally says, I'm walking in here and I still have a vendetta against this person and that person. So she's walking, stomping in to fight. And I'm kind of like, you're still on the West Palm Beach argument trip? Girl, bye. Like, stop. <laughs> and then I just blew it and I had an emotional, you know, reaction because I'm like, perspective. Yeah. You appreciate where you are in life right now. Appreciate your health. And that's where my mindset was. So when people are like, every time she's arguing with someone, then she just blows out a, like, a declaration of like what's going on with her. And like, a, you know, dun, dun, dun. And it's kind of like, yeah, because I, I was not being selfish. But next time I'll be more than happy to walk in and tell you all the bad, sad things I'm going through and ruin your party. Come on now. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys want me to do that? You want to know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I just had a hysterectomy two weeks ago and I can't have sex for eight weeks. Mm. Oh, no. I, and that's the truth. Really? Well, poor Russell. I mean, listen, I'm healing from the inside out, okay? So mama's working here. Girl, but you same. know, we're working still with our hands and our mouth. We got, we got lots <laughs> of other parts if you want me to be so candid. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> me and you both. Well, see? <laughs> Exactly. Whether you have a baby two, five weeks yeah. ago or mm. hysterectomy, this man just won't stop, you know? So won't stop, can't stop. Do you have a, a favorite housewife uh, series besides, besides Miami that you watch? Or do you watch another any, franchise? Yeah. Do you watch another franchise? I love. Well, they all go into, I'm going to call them, I'm going to call it in and out of consciousness, right? Beverly Hills was that shit, was that bitch uh, a while ago. Especially with the the, the um, Kim in it, mm -hmm. her sister Kim and Kyle. Mm -hmm. I think that when Kathy's around, I think Kyle becomes more subdued because she's like Big Brother's watching type of thing. Because Kathy don't play that, and I love her by the way, and her purse. I love her and her purse. Her purse needs its own zip code. <laughs> um, but yeah, Beverly Hills I think is amazing. New Jersey, it's binge worthy. But it's so toxic. So here's the thing. People like housewives because they're trying to, it's escapism. Like they want to see the lifestyle, the outfits, the this and that. And then they want the arguments, but it's kind of like, oh shit, I just went, I just got into that argument just two minutes ago with my own family. So once it goes too deep into like toxicity, I like to call it dark and toxic. <laughs> <laughs> like then it's like, okay, this is too real and in my household already that I can't watch this anymore. So I don't know. I'm excited to see how it's going to play out next season and yeah. how they have these two, Melissa and Teresa, literally not filming in the same room and having two shows in one. Bogo, baby, buy one, get one free. Okay. <laughs> did you follow the Salt Lake City drama with I Monica? Did. I did. I mean, I, everyone was making such a big deal. Like, like the world stopped for two minutes and I was kind of like, Okay, okay. You didn't think That's, it was a big deal? It's a big deal of the betrayal and stuff. But like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just saw, I, I wasn't like, oh my God. Like, it was kind of like, oh shit. Okay. N next. The fan account. Would but, you want to yeah. be, would you want to film with someone like Monica? If Yeah, uh, no, it, it's, it's all about betrayal of trust because there is a bond whether you like your your girlfriends or not, there's something to be said with people sharing like, oh, I was recording our conversation and here, press the button. There's a trust barrier that we should not pass. And this was up to the ceiling at this point. It was, you know, on, on the rector scale, scale, right? So I think that Monica did something that was shot for shock value was like, oh, my God, is it right? No. Does she know it's right? I hope so. And now it's like if. Five, six girls don't want to film with you. What you going to do, right? So let's put, like like Andy said, she's on pause. She's great TV. Great. It great was a great, yeah. Yes. She carried the season. Yep. But then when you go like this so fast, so so you're furious, then it's like, okay, next season, what else do you have? So it's like a bag of tricks. And then are you staying authentic to yourself? That's why I'd rather stay nice and evil keel and be truthful and tell my story the way I had to them. Like, well, um, here, here's a fan. Here, woo, woo. Um, here, like you can't tap dance, honey, all day. So, you know. I like a waltz. Okay. I'm Slow and steady. I, I'm a ballroom. Well, you know my story. I was going to be a ballroom dancer before I met Russell. Really? And then he had me at hello, fucker. <laughs> and and then he made I you give up dancing? No. <laughs>
I mean, his other thing made me give up then. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, he had me at hello. Uh, Russell and I are, again, uh, we're freaks. Like, we're in a sense of, like, we're not normal. Like, we telepathically right now, I'm thinking something. Russell knows what I've just sent him. Grocery store, buy two g- gallons of milk. That's how crazy we are together forever type of deal. But, yeah, I, he had me at hello, and I just stayed in Miami. And, um... So, I love your relationship you know, so much. I'm dancing with the stars and you never know. I may just redeem my career. You, the you heard that. <laughs> you, you heard that. You, you and Sheena trying to get on Dancing with the Stars? Sheena, bring it. <laughs> bring it because I'm You're from going Miami, down. bitch. And I definitely have the ritmo, baby. Yes. <laughs> I think you'd have a great story for Dancing with the Stars. You know, you like it. I love it. It's, uh, Absolutely. You've certainly overcome a lot. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So well, what do you in- to dance about? <laughs> what do you anticipate being your storyline next season? I, I don't plan them because it's supposed to be reality. So. Sure, but you, you don't have any. Like, do you but guys no, have what it any? is, it's like, what are you working on now? And that ends up being your storyline. So if you say, what am I working on now? So what are you now? working on now? Okay, well, I mean, my water, uh, Miami Alkaline Water. Uh, I'm also working on an, uh, my, uh, my event career is. Kicking back up, I'm actually doing Nicole's baby shower next week, which we're doing an online series for. So Bravo is going to be partnering us up with us. It's not going to be on TV, but we're doing something digital. Um, and so we're going to do, do that and um, and some other things. You, you didn't know? want to plan our wedding? Are you putting me on the spot right now? <laughs> is this an exclusive? Let me yeah, I, unbutton tie. that tie. <laughs> is it is it a destination wedding or is it a Cali wedding? It's a destination. It's closer it's, to you. It's in Georgia. Georgia. I love Georgia. Yeah. Georgia on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Candy. Sorry, I'll take your stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. That's what I say. In life, you never know. What are you, your... Wait, by the way, exclusive. <gasps> Tell me. Thank God I didn't do Lindsay and Calls' wedding. <gasps> You were going. We were to? on DMs, like texting, like Gertie. I wish. Oh my God, I can't afford you. I'm like, yeah, somebody's got to pay me. Whether it's you or Bravo, somebody's got to pay the coin. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, look what happened. Can you imagine? Uh-huh. I would have been pissed that the week before yeah. the wedding, or whenever that split happened, I would have done all that fabulosity and didn't get to Gertify the world. Pissed. So I'm glad. Why, is, why did they break up? Lindsay and Carl. Yeah, Lindsay and Carl. From Summer House. Oh, Lindsay yes. and Carl. Yes. You were going to do that one. Well, no, she was like, I wish Gertie would play my wedding. It was a whole thing. Like she, you know, she had said out loud that she wished I could do it. And I was kind of like, uh-huh. <laughs> had, and by the way, I had met them before. I had dinner with them, with Melissa Gorga and Joe and them. We had just done this podcast and Dolores too. And, and I just saw the, I didn't see a match there. I was kind of like, huh? Yeah. Huh? Okay. I could not see this happening, but oh, and, and you called it. it. How did you? What what was going on? Because right, you know, right now, Lindsay did this podcast and, mm. and came on and and told a a very what we what we are learning seems to be a bit of a one sided story. Uh huh. There's always his side, her side, the uh, truth, right? And now that we're watching it, oh. Lin- Lindsay, you know, seems har- very hard on Carl and uh, yeah. seems to be using his personal struggle against him. Uh, Weaponizing. Yeah. People love that word, right? Uh, they do. <sighs> um, but is that is that the type of behavior that you witness while watching them? No, they weren't even in the same. T- they, they were like spread out, and I was having a conversation with her, and it's just I didn't see it. I honestly did not see them down the aisle personally. Like if and, you didn't know, you wouldn't think they were a couple. Well, they were definitely a couple. It's just that I didn't see the future with them lasting in right. a sense, you know. So I just I already, you know, you know, like when it, I just knew. I was like. I don't think that's a good match. And I've seen a lot of shit. I mean, I had a groom say no at the fucking altar. Like, literally, would you, James, take boom, boom, boom. No, I can't stage fucking left. And I was like, and it, Wait, wasn't, loves, it, it wasn't, wasn't on Love's Vine. It wasn't Love's Vine. Oh, did you see that mess? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, no, this was real life. You actually made the newspaper. I had a Stop. wedding where the groom said no at the altar. How do you handle that? This is what I did. I had my ready. Like. By the way, J-Lo thinks she's a wedding planner. I am the I am the real J-Lo wedding planner. I was like this on my radio. Take away any monogrammed items like the cocktail napkins. And I'm talking like this, literally. The cocktail napkins, the monogrammed cake, top tier, and anything in between that would show their last name. Thank you so much. We don't have a wedding anymore. Everybody, please <laughs> abort the mission. Abort mission. Everybody's running. Did you still get paid? I get paid two weeks before. Two 
weeks. Oh, okay. <laughs> 14 business days you of that includes her. Saturday and, and Sunday. Sunday. Mm-hmm. So, sweetie, I am paid in full. <laughs> I got a question to ask you since you are you know a lot about the wedding industry. Yes. We are currently planning our wedding. I saw, I saw that. I've been on the it's Instagram. Been, it's been uh, an experience. Yeah. Overall, you know, uh, it's been fine. Mm. But what I've learned is that um, a lot of people in the wedding business like to make your wedding about them. If the I have dinner, you mean? just oh. everybody, like, like if vendor, I got to hear, vendors. if I got to hear one more time, this is how it works in the wedding industry. Oh, really? You don't think that's the norm? Maybe we're working. I guess with this the wrong is not thing. a dirty we... experience because I really <laughs> like. For me, my my thing is every wedding needs to be a representation of the bride and groom. Everyone should walk away from that wedding being like. That's so Navi and Nick. That shit. You saw what they did. She had butterflies. You remember how she loves a butterfly? Everyone should be like, this is everywhere. This is their house. That's why when I design, I'm like, what's in your house? Send me pictures of whatever you have in your house. And I will make sure at your wedding, there's something there that just feels like right. Home. I don't want it to be like, oh, this is a dirty production. People know it is because it's always like something special. And there's always a twist somewhere. That's how I make sure my events pop. Thank you. Harper Bazaar and Vogue top planner in the world. Damn. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but it, it's not about me. It has to be about you guys. I, I couldn't give a shit. Like, no, no. What's the secret to planning a good wedding? Stay true to yourself and don't try to be a Jones. And I'm like keeping up with the Joneses. Oh my God, my friend Becky had a wedding and she had a, like five, you know, ice cube, you know, luge. I need six, t- like, stop it. And invite people who you actually like and who you have spoken to five years prior and who will you will speak to five years pri- you know, post because it, it's just too much. When people send me a guest list, I'm like, go through that guest list again and make sure these people are meant to be in that room. And that it gets cut in half most of the time. So, yeah. Ours got a, a mm. little skyrocketed. Of course. But you, I guarantee you have a lot of people in the business and you should invite him because, you know, he da, 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 and he's a CEO. No offense, but like you say, it's a private affair. It's between him and I and love you. Thank you. Bye. And that's it. Who's going to be mad at you? They really love you. They shouldn't be mad at you. And that's it. So think hard on that guest list. Do you ever do like um, month of planning? Like come in like the no. month before and be like, let me just fix all this. I could come this. in the month before, but I mean, I'm still going to be paid in full for the full experience. <laughs> and you know what I hate? I just, it's like picking up garbage, right? So it's kind of like, okay, what did you do? Oh shit, that's wrong. Let me redo that contract. What did you, what, what, why did you do it for two hours when you know you're going to have da, 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 here? And I'm just like fixing. So now I'm the fixer and I'm not focused on just the detail. So it's got to be right from A through Z. Everything... You doing this hopefully once in a lifetime, and it is true. It is it is a priceless event that you're doing because it's a reflection of you. So whether you want to spend money or not, not a lot of money, it's just a reflection of you. That's it. And me, my I dress how I want to be addressed, and I, when I host, I host, and it's gonna be done right. So just those little, little things that I like to um, advise about. I want to go to a Gertie party. It's this special. They're special. A lot of people. Are she's like, not inviting us. No, no, no. yeah. She's no. like, yeah. I don't no, have a party. She's like, yeah, she's like no, they're amazing. Yeah. So. They're amazing. Hopefully, you'll be throwing one, and then you'll be like, "Did you go to my Gertie party?" <laughs> oh, so wait, the only way you get to go to one of your parties is if we throw a Gertie party. But I don't throw it at the parties because when I throw them, it costs me so much fucking money. Yeah. The last party I yeah. threw was my 40th birthday because I've never thrown a party in my life. My 40th birthday. Put it this way, I had a, I had a photo booth technology created. So that I was able to be in each photo. Stop. Wait, not only just a still, it wasn't a still photo. It was an animated. So I had to do three costume changes, green screen, dance in three different outfits. So that anytime you went in the photo booth, you were, I was in, the, in your shot. And we were just dancing together. But Gertie was over there on the other side of the, the room. Stop. That's brilliant. No, it's crazy. No, but it's brilliant because you can't take a photo with everybody at a wedding. There you go. You just cut out the the... Middleman. The middleman. Yeah. yeah. That's a gritty party and it's not normal. What if someone didn't I want hate... you in their picture? Well, the f- if you came to my party, <laughs> hello. Hello. You've been gertified. You've been gertified. <laughs> and received your gertification. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. Uh, what uh, Do you have any opinions on the whole Bethany Frankel reality reckoning 
stuff or uh, a lot of uh, peers or former peers of you? I think I definitely took a break. Now it's what, um, uh, Leah and um, Brandy, right? So Well, I mean... <laughs> who's up next? <laughs> I don't think Bethany ever takes a break. She's right. always saying something. But she did start this whole yeah. kind of uh, movement, if you mm-hmm. want to call it, of uh, kind of suggesting that a lot of the housewives or Bravo stars are somehow mistreated or manipulated. I kind of roll my eyes at that in, in terms of, and, and, and it's not to say that, again, as someone who's been on reality TV, right. production does things that frustrate us. Uh, they, they're, you know, they they may try to suggest us to do things that we might regret. But are we, we're all grown we're as all, folks, Thank you. Right? Um, so <laughs> do you think it's generally bullshit or do you find, it, how is your experience, I guess, when it comes to working with Bravo? I was the Bravo? first to comment on the page six post when it all came out about the, um, I think what, Kathy Griffin was like, oh, I was offered cocaine. And I'm kind of like, okay, mm, do you want a cigarette? Oh, do you want a cookie? No. Yeah, sure. It, it, you do you. Like, you know, in a sense. And I'm not saying that it's happening because in me, my experience, Andy Cohen's offered me. The only thing he's offered me was amazing hospitality and nothing else. So I don't have any grain of, of sour, you know, notes about Bravo itself. Because they let me tell my story and they didn't edit it to make it anything that it wasn't. It was the truth. And I I was very, very, like, scared the first season. And I was watching how they were going to produce. Because I'm like, people are telling me they're going to make you look crazy. They're going to do it. And, And then second season. And then the third season. Right now, I have no inkling of, like mistrust in my production company, in Bravo, in Universal Studio, in Universal, um, you know, because they're really our, our storytellers. And it's been really, honestly, organic for me. Everyone has their own experience. And I think that it speaks volume that 90% or 99% of the people on Bravo are saying, Andy has been amazing and gracious and is a champion, actually, of women and our movement to push forward. So so do you feel like to the people who are making a stink, do you think it's just mostly jealousy or, you know, you know, mad that they're... So it's circumstantial, maybe, right? So like, you know, it was good before, now it's no longer good. So when it doesn't serve you, then there's a different perspective of it. So there's a lot of moving parts here and I don't want to speak for anyone, nor do I want to negate their feelings. But how long was this video? Was it last week or was it three years ago? And now it's being bought on because we're no longer part of the show and because you're getting sued by, you know, a lot of people because of the sexual... (laughs) Yada, yada, yada. You're talking about Brandy? (laughs) On that one, yes. Yeah. But I like her. I actually like Brandy. I met her at BravoCon two years ago, and she's cool. But, you know, there's a lot of grievances in different places, I think, for everyone maybe that have these issues. And I can't really speak to it because I'm happy. (laughs) I'm not. (laughs) <laughs> I'm happy with Bravo. I'm a Bravo baby. How was it your first season joining? Because you joined with a reboot. So you not, only, you not only had established yourself, but there was pre-existing relationships. Yeah. So, I mean, Nicole and I were, were friends before camera. Alexia I knew also about town before filming. And then, and Kiki came on as my friend, so I knew her. And then everybody else was new on the show. And um, yeah, it was, but you see everybody in the scenes. It's just that like you don't know them, know them. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, Miami's super small. Super small. Have you guys been? Yeah. 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 You like it? Not mm. really. It's hot as yeah. much as balls, isn't it? Yeah, I've never really had an amazing time in Miami. Oh, and because you I, haven't I, been around Gertie. That's I mean, true. a Gertie guys, party. No, not, not even a Gertie party. Just like a Gertie experience. I mean, Miami really in any town you walk, you get off the yeah. plane, and it's like you what really do have I do? to know people. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and time. I, I guess I haven't been in Miami with people from Miami. There you never. go. We also are very. Uh, we we don't we end the night early, and I feel like Miami does not. I guess not. They sleep I, during the day and party at night. You know. I, I mean, I like day drinking. Day drinking, mm-hmm. right? Like that whole like brunch scene is everything. Yes. And then you take a nap at three, and then you wake up at eight, and it's like, what happened? <laughs> and then you catch up on your your <laughs> your movies or yeah. shows, and then life is better like that, right? I mean, shit, day drinking is like everything. I love it. I live for brunch. Mm-hmm. How do, how do you? What is your stance when it comes to uh, including kids on on Bravo? Because I I always find it fascinating. Because like I feel like. I don't know how the production works on Housewives, okay. um, but it, it seems like, you know, it's like, like some scenes, I guess I would call stage, not necessarily scripted. Like, okay. you know, you guys seem like, OK, hey, we have to talk about this. Right. And when it comes to kids, it always feels a little awkward. Yeah, because it's like it's a one... kid ain't gonna lie. He's gonna be like, "What are you doing?" Well, not only that, but <laughs> move that kid. Yeah. Yeah. the camera guy. Or it's just like you know, it's one thing for two housewives yeah. who you know this is a job. They're being right. paid. They're pros. You know, they're 
you guys are performers as, as much as it is real right there's a bit of performance at times elements to it okay and with when kids are included it always feels half the time i feel like the kids are they looked a bit kidnapped <laughs> 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 like they don't want to be there sometimes but i don't know what you're some of the best scenes though because they're, they're truth tellers right the kids it's like always like shh like you know is that the friend that has the bad the bad you know breath uh, oh my yeah. god like so th th there could be some good moments out of it my older son you hardly see him because he made it clear I don't want to be a part of it. And sometimes he'll come out of like nowhere and it's like, oh, here, look who he is. But you will hardly see Miles film. And I made it very clear to production. He doesn't want to film. He's a teenager with hormones like blasting. I'm like, I'm not messing with that kid. Do they ever ask to have your kids on? Well, it's part of like, what's your, this is what they want. What's your morning routine like? Of course it includes my kids. So then they're like, okay, sure. so where are the kids? If you stage yourself to be something you're not or, or to live a life you're not, a lot of people have been blasted for it and put on, you know, that's what it is. For me and Russell, it's like we're so we're simple people. I mean, so simple. Like it's like they were like Russell is a natural in first first scene because he's, he's like, OK, I'm coming home from work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do what I do best. Cook breakfast, take my kids to school. And so we don't we don't stop. We just are ourselves. And I think that's what people are taking away from. What is your stance on uh, deciding not to talk about something, something we've discussed recently on Beverly Hills Housewife, Kyle, Kyle. right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of conversations about her relationship with Mo and yeah. her lack of desire to talk about it, yet even though she seems to be kind of teasing it on her terms, but doesn't want to talk about it with yeah. her peers. I, I, you know, as a fan, I see both sides. I, I see like, listen, like how can you, you know, I mean, maybe it's in real time. And so she's having a hard time even expressing what's happening. Because when with cancer, that's what you see me with this emotional roller coaster. Because it's like, I don't, I don't want to be in that place right now. I don't want to be mentally there. But then, oh, my God, all of a sudden you are. And it's like, you look crazy. Because you said kind of like, what's going on here? But like, I understand how it is that trauma and emotional turmoil that you are struggling is in you know struggling with from it within so with Kyle I feel like it was just so brand new everything that was happening that it was hard for her to like put it out there because she didn't know what tomorrow was going to look like maybe 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 then again it could be the other potential where maybe it's kind of like okay I already know what the final you know game is on this but maybe I'm gonna like create you know a little hysteria who knows I don't know you won't know and it is what it is right but it keeps us watching <laughs> right so you're always like what's gonna happen because i still don't have an answer is she with morgan is she not with morgan right what do you guys think i have my well i would be curious about what you think i think we talk about what we Kathy think all the time spoke volume when she says don't be ashamed just tell her you're a lesbian that's pretty much kathy was saying by saying it's okay sister don't be ashamed that's what i thought and it's okay. Like I said, I just think that there's a lot of pressure for Kyle, maybe. And so let's see what happens. Do you think her and Morgan are more than friends? Because I, I, I personally feel like, do. Really? I see it. You can't hide love and affection. You can't. There's an energy there. It's a vibration. Can't they just be like good girlfriends? Good girlfriends. <laughs> Real good. Yeah, good. Real good. Mm -hmm. Real good. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys like foreplay here? Like what is happening? Maybe. <laughs> I can sense the good energy here, by the way. Maybe. Sexual oh, the, chemistry is there's working There's no Lindsay here. Carl here. It's, it's a good vibe. Yeah. No, you're gonna, no you're not going to walk out and be like, I don't see it. No, I do see it. I do see it. So <laughs> Thank cute. God. Yeah. Thank God. And the pictures speak volume to the way he holds you and all that. Mm -hmm. so okay. cute. Are you proud of your baby? You of have course. a baby. Yeah. I know, so I know. Can you, She's okay. perfect. She hasn't really me done anything to be proud of yet. It took I mean, me I'm... over a year to really sink in that I just had a fucking baby. I used That'll to every stoplight, I would stop and I would, I would go like this. Same. Okay, we, it's real. It's not a dream. Yeah. It took me over a year. I was thinking about that the other day. Right? Like, I could wake up and be like, holy shit, that was all a dream. <laughs> it does seem a, a bit... I have sur yeah. a little, like, imposter syndrome of just yeah. like, this is... Okay. I know. Yeah. I know. That's called life. It's really weird. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about being a mom? Oh my God. The way that they are protective of me. I think that's how like old are they? Things. Oh, they're 16. Oh. <laughs> Taller than me. He's the size of Russell, wears his shoes and the like, clothes. And then Liam You're is 11. Tall. I'm 5'9. I'm Russell's 6. Um, and then Liam is my twin. He's a Capricorn and he's like over, almost as tall as me. He's only 11. But everything is like, Mommy, you're so beautiful. Mommy, I love <gasps> so. you. And it's just the way they look at me and the way they're like, if there's a man in the room and I'm talking to them, like my older son would be like, 
And I'm like, no, say hi. And he's looking, he would not say hi to them. He'll be like, who the fuck are you? Like, <gasps> and I'm like, Ooh. so I kind of hate it. But then I'm like, oh. that's sweet. Yeah. How did you navigate telling them about the well, diagnosis? I, I had Russell do it. Oh, yeah. I literally could not because I'm like, I can't. It was so fresh and new. That, and that's what I'm talking about with Cal. Like it's, when things are so fresh in you, it's like you can't even fathom to understand what's going on within yourself. So I'm like, Russell, you tell them. He told them first. And then I reinforced that message. It's like, as daddy told you, this is what's happening. But it was at a time where I was able to articulate it properly. I don't want to scare them more than I'm scaring myself. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I can't tell them anything. I'm going to tear up in three seconds. How did they respond? Internally. They internal internalized it a lot, I think. And um, they would just kind of like, be more empathetic with me, like, you know, hugging a little longer, come in and kiss me in the morning before school. Like little things, you know, would be kind of like a wink, wink type of thing where they, they didn't want to articulate it because it was hard for them, I think. But they just showed it to me. So, Aww. yeah, I know. It's so cute. I'm a queen of my castle. You I love are. It. I told you if I had a girl, I'd be in jail. No, she's going to like jail. take him. Yeah. Where are you going with those Daisy Dukes? Who are you calling? Where are you going? Who are you sleeping? No, no, no. Sleep over where? No. I know. Stay home. I what know. advice do you have for us as parents? Like, especially as... Don't that... be their friend. <gasps> really? Don't be their friend friend. Be your friend okay. but not friend friend. Like, don't be like, oh my God, girl, let's hang out. No. You're the mother yeah. and you need to make sure that she respects you as such. Because then when they start telling you to shut up, <gasps> you know how those kids are fresh these days, girl? Not my kids. My kids are crazy. They know not to mess with me. <laughs> Anyway, but I think that if you're too friendly and trying to be down too much, it's going to backfire later when you try to set ground rules. And yeah. they're going to be like, well, what are you talking about? Like, stop it. They're going to take you take it for a joke. So to me, I would say know the boundaries and make sure that they respect you mm -hmm. and look up to you. So everything that you do, your kids are watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, daddy. I, I think I'm, like, like, yeah, I'm always thinking about lessons, you know. Yeah. Like, you know. But everything you do, they're going to see it later on in life. So that's how I lead my life. The way I react to things, whatever, it's always going to be organic. But I always have to remember, do I slap this bitch? Or am I going to sit there and just kind of like think higher when they go low, you go high. Right. So oh, you try yes. to do that whole thing because, you know, your kids are watching and like, I want to be an example to them. So and also an example to myself. Let me like raise above the bullshit. Do they watch the show? Absolutely not. They, they don't even have Instagram or whatever. Mm. They have nothing. Russell either, which is the best part because girl. Do, but they don't have, they they're have not online? Media. No. Because you don't they're let them? They're sitting Pokemon. I was like, kids, how do you manage? Guys, yeah, how do you I, do that? I would. Trust me. Like like brand brand collaborators are like, okay, we want Russell to do this, whatever. I'm like, but he doesn't have Instagram. So you have to go through the Gertie Design account because, you know, so we're, we're doing collaborations together, which is cute. Um, but like Russell is like in high demand right now. Everybody wants a piece of Russell, Ooh, which is great. I'm like cologne, that. shoes, clothes. Yes. I'm like, bring it. Here's my address. But I'm his manager. <laughs> I'm going nowhere. Okay, bitches. <laughs> yeah, come through me. He's so cute. Oh my God. But no, the kids aren't. They're they're just not interested. They're in po to Pokemon, Marvel, Star Wars. That's it. Uh, how did Russell handle you starting? I know he was probably the most supportive, but mm. like you starting out on uh, on Housewives, like was that like a major shift? Having these cameras in your house and filming dynamics of your relationship. I was so scared because I'm like, the only way I wouldn't do it is if Russell's like, I can't handle this. Can't like Russell was like, yeah, this is. This is okay. My career in event in the event industry has been 22 years span, right? So it's like I was known for what I was doing and I had been approached to do two different shows actually, but more on the Jeff Lewis side. More like we want to see you in action doing weddings. And I'm like, damn, that's a lot of pressure because it could make or break me. And I just got scared. And this is like years before the housewife call. And then when the housewife call came and, you know, we started talking about that, I was like, okay, this is it. Because it's a balance of like my life and work. So not just one thing, which is my livelihood. It's just, you know, a, a little spraying around of, you know, the greenery. So I was like, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that for sure. So it was a perfect, um, yeah, it was a perfect combo. And Russell was down with it. So. How did the call happen? It wasn't a call like, hey, we, you know, it was more like a, I think they were scouting for people. My name had been thrown a lot around. And then the connections of our friendship. So they already, you know, they started sure. with the OGs, I think, because of their, you know, mark for the past couple seasons that they were on and then it was kind of like who do you know who are you friends with and then the build-up of nicole and then oh gertie and then it just became this knit um and we're the chemistry you can't deny 
you can't deny the chemistry of Miami. And I think that people are mind blown at the, how it all meshes together. And we're just chaos. It, th- that gondola ride. I don't know if you guys watched that. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was wild. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, the altitude, wonderful. Altitude hits me and I'm like... Mm. And it's just, oh. You've got you throwing up. You've got Lisa The yelling. mariachi band all at once. This is not f- editing. This is literally happening at the same sequence. Like, crazy town. You guys cover so many different types of characters, too, and yeah. so many different reasons that to people pop can relate off to. a thousand the, the, percent. The culture and I think the diversity is like the number one thing that we're now representing the world. Yeah. And not so much like a town. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like from OC to Miami, it's like, shit. You have Brazilian, Russian, you know, Dominic- every, yeah. everything. It's cool. I absolutely cool. love it. Um, also, sorry, one last question for me with Lisa. Don't say sorry. No, no. <laughs> I was like interjecting. But yeah. um, I, with Lisa's divorce that yeah. came through, um, was did you feel like she, were you trying to help her kind of navigate through that? Was she even like open to hearing that? I feel like you having like a 20 year very... My advice was not warranted at all. It was kind of like, you've never been divorced, so you kind of stay out of it. I was like, Okay. okay. I thought I, I could give you a different perspective on because it seemed like she wanted to try to work it out so I could help. Maybe. No. Okay. Because was it you initially or was it Kiki that was like uh, you both some were like that she keeps bringing up the negative. It was Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> Kiki was like, oh my God, Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. You know, if you have a bag, a store bag, it's Lenny. Lenny's fault. Like he was a lot. But yeah, I mean, Lisa's going through it, to be honest. And yeah, divorce is shit. And of course, it, it lasts a long time. It's two seasons in, in talking about Lenny at this point. Right. But we just want to hear the word Lenny. Right. Like, we want to know how you're doing, Lisa. We don't really want to hear about how Lenny affected you. Like worry about how you are affecting yourself and how you're moving forward and above it all. So, you know, she's a phoenix. Oh, I hope she takes your advice. You have great, you have great advice. Really, yeah. You know? I have a lot more where that came from. Have you done a lot of celebrity uh, <laughs> weddings or parties? Uh, yeah. Do you have any fun uh, ex- through my anecdotal, like, in my head? <laughs> best or worst, any, re- any ones you regret doing? I did an amazing uh, ev- wedding for Chris Bosch. Ooh. Um, amazing. They're still together, thank God. I, most, of my, <laughs> most of my couples actually are still together. Like, I can count on my fingers. Do you, yeah, do you think you could be like a, a matchmaker now with all the wedding planning you've done? Well, you know, I was asked to actually perform a wedding ceremony, like me and Russell to perform a wedding ceremony. I'm like, wait, that's a thing. We should do that because 28 years together, imagine us being like the officiant. How cute is that? Russell looked, like, looked at me like I was crazy. And I'm like, Russell, you're good eye candy. So just stand there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I think we could definitely do that. I mean, I was thinking, I'm like, should we do a podcast and like talk shit about like a marriage and how amazing it could be, how uh, horrible it could be and all the in-betweens, you know? So I don't know. I like to talk. <laughs> I don't know. So Chris Bosch, you did their Chris wedding. Chris Bosch, yep. Is there, was um, there, what was your worst Wedding planning experience. The wedding where the groom said no at the altar. Yeah, other, than yeah, that, yeah, other than yeah. that, other than that, other than that, other than that. Well, I mean, the Bridezilla thing is kind of like, you don't know what you're talking about. What do you want to do? Oh, I had a wedding where the groom wanted to do the, um, what is it when you go into the world with those those the goggles and you're like into- The uh, virtual reality. Okay, VI. Yeah, he VR, wanted to do yeah. a wedding there. And I was like, wh- where is there? Where Where we're going? Yeah, and I want to do a wedding there. And I'm like, there, where? <laughs> so I was like, fuck. Everyone wear goggles. We're all yes. going. That's insane. I'm going to invite everyone in my family in India and everything. And I'm like, mm-hmm, okay. And we're going to meet in the virtual room. And what happened? Like, So what did y'all end up doing? Have the wedding in his backyard. <gasps> he has a big ass backyard in uh, Las, Ang- Las Vegas. So they flew me out there and I gertified, gertified all of that. It. it was amazing, actually. But I was kind of like, there, where? I said, this is what I said. Gertie, you should plan a timeless wedding. In 10 years, you're going to love it. So will you, are you sure you're going to love the their wedding in virtual wear wedding? You know, and he was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Backyard? He changed course. <laughs> <laughs> Easily. <laughs> yep. What, what brought you to LA in general? Are you out here just so like, I was attending the Direct TV Oscar streaming party. How, how was that? We uh, we got invited to that, but we have a baby, so oh, so cute. But yeah, so I flew for that, and I, Vicky Gundelson was there. Phaedra Parks, Janelle from Traders, um, Erica Jane, Lisa Milan, Darby. What's her first name? Ashley. Ashley Darby. Ashley Darby was there. Olivia from Summer. Oh no. Southern Charm. Yep, that. Got you. (laughs) A lot of people. It was cool. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah it was like a and I was there. Bravo's who yeah. who. Yeah. yeah. D listers, but yeah, I was there. What did you? I, I don't. I hate considering myself like a celebrity, you know, whatever. I mean, now I think that me and Russell are more recognizable because it's like white guy, bald black girl. Yes, Russell and Gertie. So now I'm like a valet parking. Gertie, take a selfie. I'm like, oh shit. It's a, it's hard out here, man. Let me tell you, it's hard. It's hard work. I, I, I think the hair looks fantastic. No, you I'm look, obsessed with my hair yeah. now. Really? Yeah. And literally, with the hot flashes and the Miami heat, I, I just can't bear all this freaking hair on my back. So, like, it are, all worked out. Are the, the best. hot flashes part of the, the chemo? Yeah, because it, it, they put me on surgical menopause. So I had to have a hysterectomy to suppress my estrogen, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, the, the, yeah. I'm on uh, menopause without wanting to be on menopause, uh, but it's all part of the journey. And so the hot flashes are coming with it. And hopefully, soon I won't become, uh, you know, fat because apparently. Your estrogen. Once you lose your estrogen, your body just like, ugh. yeah. So we're gonna have to work it out. We have oh to work gosh. out now. We have to work out now. <laughs> no, I know that's how I, I know. Care. Right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Listen, Russell loves me whether I'm bald, fat, ugly, whatever. It doesn't matter. You I know, was like gonna say nowadays you can just like lay on a table and they'll do your abs, your butt. Oh, I'm not saying I'm doing all that. No, I'm gonna keep it natural, and Russell's gonna have to deal with it. Okay. So, oh no, yeah. the workouts where they like put the thing on and it's like it's pulsing true. and they no, lift right. your butt. Yeah, you can literally do nothing. Do. Yeah. And get abs, so don't even worry about it. Yeah, Nelly. You're, you're right. You're, That's you're, what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna look into it. Mm-hmm. What is it M- called? M sculpt. M sculpt. Yeah. It's like two thousand la- like abs in two Twenty thousand squats and mm-hmm. But it doesn't really work because I haven't seen a person that looks like like perfect body. Let me tell you, the people that are using it don't typically tell you they are. God. It's I'm in the gym and I only drink water and olive oil. Mm-hmm. And olive oil. <laughs> I never heard of that drink before. <laughs> Shit. Okay. All right. You Dude, like are it people actually it? drinking olive oil? A little oil? olive oil in your coffee? Yeah. Starbucks started putting it yeah, on their menu. Wait, what? It helps um, allow you to... Uh, but doesn't coffee them. already do that? Exactly. Yeah, but I'm like a little, exactly. add a little olive oil. You need more? You... <laughs> oh. Honey, some people How need a little extra help. That's California for you. Yeah. yeah. They're That's doing weird so. shit out here. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Not me. How many more uh, seasons do you think you have left in you? I mean, I... I... I have a lot of story to tell. I think that, you know, people don't know all sides of Gertie. I am an onion. I like to say a flower. I like like, lots of petal counts. Yes, yes. What is Um, the side uh, of you that the people haven't seen yet that you'd like to be able to show? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm nice until I'm not. And you've seen a little bit of me, like, not putting up with bullshit. I think a lot of time I I, people mistake my kindness for weakness. Um, So just don't fuck with me. I'm a nice person. But don't fuck with me because I will fucking. Have you always been like that? Like, were you raised that way of just like, don't put up with bullshit like you? I'm one of seven kids of seven kids. Five of us are girls. And my mother was like, you're diamonds. You don't fucking break. And the reason why I'm very resilient is because um, at the age of nine, I came from France. So I was born in Haiti. At the age of one, we moved from Haiti to Paris. From Paris, we moved when I was nine to the U.S. Do you speak French? Je parle français, bien sûr. Oh, hot. Ah. Oh, hot. <laughs> um, and so when I got to America, I'm like this tall. I'm age nine, literally five nine. Fucking like braids, wearing like church clothes. because My father was a pastor and we couldn't wear pants. And I'm coming to this school and I don't speak no English. And it's like, oh, shit. So now like getting picked on, they used to call me giraffe and all that stuff. And then I got my swag back on. And, you know, I ended I ended the season with being prom queen. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and with a man. Thank you. Yes. And so, you know, you build yourself up when people are trying to break you down. That's that's the story of it. So. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot, a lot of story to tell. Trust me. There's just a pro- the migration to America is a whole story unto itself, which I haven't shared at all with anybody and Russell always tells me like why are you suppressing that story and that side of you because I'm like it's traumatic but soon maybe I'll talk about it on the show if it's meant to be Do you, could you give us a little nugget of it here uh, mm, yeah um, I haven't spoken about it much but it's just that you know when I came to the US one thing that people don't know it wasn't like this story of like yay we're on a plane family one two three it was like me and my brother, just two of the seven kids, the youngest two, we were dropped off at my father's quote unquote cousin and we were left there for three months. We're, and I was nine. And that was in the U.S.? Yeah. So I was in the U.S., not speaking English, in a stranger's house, who I was told was family. And I was like, OK. And my parents were like, see you soon. Bye. And then never saw them until they came back, like, you know, to, to move here. So 
that itself is crazy. And I never talk about it because I'm like, I don't know. But I think it explains a lot about why I am the way I am. Why like, do I'm they a, send the two of you first? It's it's a thing. It's a cultural thing, I think. Okay. You know, like a lot of Haitian people, like when you're trying to get out of the rut and the, you know, the bottom and you're trying to come up, you don't, you sacrifice a lot, whether it be like, you know, sending one person and then you don't have enough money to send the other person. Whatever it was, it was still like, in my view, kind of like, the two youngest ones you sure or like the two oldest ones that are 17 like like nine and you know 11 it was in, it was intense so I literally don't even speak about it I don't even think about it until Russell's like but you know this is because of this there's that and I'm like oh yeah I forgot about it you know so it's really weird yeah but mm-hmm. you so should definitely lot... open up about that yeah I'm gonna write a book <gasps> One day. I mean, I have, a lot, I have a lot to share, obviously. The cancer story itself is as- aspiring to many people. Um, the way I was brought up, I mean, my p- planning parties and all that stuff. So there's a lot There's a lot to me. There's a lot about you, yeah. There's a lot about me. Well, Gertie, are you down to give someone else some relationship advice? It's time. It's a, We have this texting okay. office hours. You ready Let's for it? Let's do it. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm yes. down. All right. I'm ready. I have it. nothing else to do after this okay. except to have lunch with Lisa Milan mm. and then go to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk to me. Apostrophe. Woo, we love apostrophe, don't we? Because, hey, we got to take care of our skin. And there is nothing more annoying than having that, you know, skin problems on your face. You call up the dermatologist. So, like, you can come in four months from now. What? But also, there's just so many products to choose from. I feel like going to the store to find a new product is super overwhelming. Whether you're looking for cereal or toilet paper, there are so many options. It's hard to know what's best for you. But when it comes to finding skincare products that actually work, it's even more overwhelming. And Apostrophe is here to help. Apostrophe's goal is to help you feel confident in your own skin, whether you're dealing with breakouts, signs of aging, acne scarring. Apostrophe will help you love the skin that you're in. It's an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized acne treatment for your unique skin, which Allie loves, uses, and loves. I did. And Leia sent me, I think it was you, Leia, you sent me a screenshot of someone's Mm -hmm. comment. And it was like, we need a skincare routine from Allie. And I almost just commented back. I was like, apostrophe. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were like, Allie's skin is glowing. What is your secret? And it's apostrophe. apostrophe. Well, we have a special deal for our audience. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash V-I-A-L-L when you use our code V-I-A-L-L. That's a savings of $15. This code is only available for our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash V-I-A-L-L and click to get started. Then use our code V-I-A-L-L at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode. Oh, Viore. Everywhere I go, I'm seeing Viore all over the place. I literally went there on Sunday and bought so many things. So many I was things. The dress I was wearing yesterday was Viore. That was Viore? Mm-hmm. It looked lovely. Yeah, it was yeah. very cozy. Yeah. Now, was it specifically a maternity dress or was that something that just works as a maternity? It's just something that works as a maternity. As a maternity, I saw it was going viral and I went and I bought it and I usually don't like wearing dresses that are just straight dresses, but it... I felt like it gave me good structure and it was just so comfortable. Yeah, I love that everything is designed to be worked out in, but it doesn't look like it or feel like it. It's so comfortable. You'll want to wear it all the time. It's more comfortable than whatever you're wearing right now. And not only do they have stuff for women, but the men's core short, the men's Sunday's performance jogger are two essential things I have in my workout closet that you need to get for the men in your life. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's V-U-O-R i.com slash v-i-a-l-l not only will you receive 20 percent off your first purchase but enjoying free shipping on any u.s orders over 75 dollars and free returns go to viore.com slash v-i-a-l-l and discover the versatility of viore clothing how's it going it's going good what's your name my name's megan how old are you megan 43 oh, okay. oh and you actually told him i we, mean come on nick it's, it's a thing you don't tell, ask a woman for her age wait on this show we do okay fine uh, fine, <laughs> fine. Uh, how can we help <laughs> so i've been dating my divorce lawyer who just found out is married with children oh okay you just found out you divorce yeah your, your divorce lawyer so you're trying to yeah. get a divorce and using him to do that. And he's over here flirting with you and all of that. And then he's married with children. How did you find out? Yeah. So I'd been chatting with him for a while. Um, kind of divulged all of my private and confidential information to him because obviously trust is source. Yeah. 
And then actually a a client of mine, we started chatting and I realized, you know, that we had used the same lawyer and she said, oh, such a nice guy, eh? Um, You know, it's great to have like a family man um, as your lawyer. And I was like, oh, Oh like family man? (laughs) And she said, yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, just kind of didn't say much. And I was like, oh, so he's like married (laughs) um, and has children and she said yeah and I was like oh well that's that's sweet (laughs) um and then was like what the f F. does this guy have Instagram that he actually like is on public where you see pictures because usually Google does a pretty good job at like outing people's shit right right um so no he has no social media Uh and he had absolutely (laughs) no um social media so didn't really creep out or look into it because I was like, oh, okay, well, makes sense. You know, lawyer trying to keep certain things private. Um, but since the fact did a bunch of investigating um, and have found pictures of him with his family online on other people's accounts. So where are you at now? Like what, other than telling us this very juicy, fun story from a, fun? Our, not, not, not fun for her, but you know, fun for the audience. Okay. What can we help you with? Like, yeah. what are you trying to figure out at this point? Are you hooked? Yeah. So basically I, yeah, I was hooked on the person I thought mm. he was. And I was like, you know what, this, this is wrong. Um, part of the reason my marriage, I was in this situation was because of infidelity. Um, so really on, his, it's very on, open on your and honest. husband's part. Good question. Um, my part. <gasps> okay. Yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so was there, yeah, go ahead. Is your divorce final? No. Okay. Okay. So he's still your lawyer? Or is he? Kind of. I'm in the process of trying to obtain a new lawyer. So he is still my lawyer until yeah. everything goes through to switch that over. Yeah. Are, are, were you in the process of that before you found out that he was a married man? Or like, why were you switching? Because you were dating him and you thought, eh, or, mm-hmm. or because now you don't. Or, or Conflict of interest. Yeah. Mm. Now it's a conflict of interest and I don't trust him. Yeah. Yep. be handling you know sense that life matters have you confronted him about yeah. his family i did and 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 he said i i just called him i i was very good with keeping personal and professional separate so anything to do with divorce i always emailed him and then anything personal you know was was phone calls texts all that type of thing mm-hmm. um so i did try to keep the two very separate matters so i did call him out and just said Hey, I need I need to chat with you. He assumed it was work related, and I just said, you know, can we can we speak openly and honestly about this? Like I I was told you're married with children, um, and he said, no, I'm not. <gasps> and I said, oh, is your wife's name not? He said right. her name, and he said no. But that's what it is, and he's and like, where and and like yeah, and yeah, like that's what it is. <laughs> and then what? And then what? <laughs> yeah. And he said, I'll chat with you in a bit, babe. <laughs> babe. When was that? Oh, like a couple of weeks ago. And have you spoken to them since? No. Have you tried to reach out to him? I did try to reach out to him to say, hey, what's going on? Are you like, yeah, hey, what's going on? And he's ghosted you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like even as your lawyer, he stopped. Doesn't he have a fiduciary duty to perform to do his job? Yeah. Yeah. So he still has to um, reach out to me in regards to, yeah, professionally. is he doing that? Um, I had to reach out to him once, um, mm-hmm. and he did reply. Okay, business related. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, what yeah. Are you thinking. Damn. So, like, yeah. where, what can we help you with? Like, where, where are you at? Like, what are you thinking, feeling? I was very open and honest that I, I want no part in any type of infidelity, no part in being in some sort of triangle, um, have been in counseling, you know, working through all of those issues was very open and vulnerable with him about all of that. Yeah. So I guess just trying to decide, do I report him uh, to the law association and or what would you do... reporting him for? Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a he's is he not allowed to i don't know how that works me either can he yeah so yeah it is a breach so you are not allowed to actively Mm. date a client at the same time as you're representing them okay yeah what do you think Um, you should do and and when you use a position of power to manipulate someone is also against their something i mean i know he lied about the marriage part 
you know, Correct. and that's fucked up. Mm -hmm. So that's not excusing yeah. that behavior. But do you really feel like he had power over you? Right. No, not necessarily. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. What does your gut tell you you should do? Mm -hmm. My gut tells me I should tell his wife. <gasps> they, they, why, they why, have... why that? I mean, like for, for first, we, right now we are deciding whether you should tell the proper authorities. Right. Right. I would probably go that um, route. Uh, telling his wife, I wouldn't recommend. It'll take okay. care of itself, though. If you tell the authorities some way, somehow, it will yeah. take care of itself and it'll trickle down into her lap. Uh, Dr. Phil was recently on our episode of Ask Nick. I don't know if you listened to that oh. similar situation. And he had a very good point. It's like, this woman won't thank you. You know, he's going to get right. ahead of the lie. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not doing it to protect her. You're doing it to get revenge on him. If you want to get revenge on him, go to the proper authorities. Exactly. But like inserting yourself in that relationship, I don't think is going to get you the outcome that you're looking for. Right. Yeah. Partly why I haven't done that yet, because I was like, you know what? I you never win I either. I want to they always no. look at you. Oh, she's a homewrecker and whatever. She's not going to want. She's going to be in denial. The first step is always to be in denial. So you will never win in that situation. So do what you have to do. I think focus on you and your outcome, which is to get a divorce and to rid yourself of this lawyer. So get that done and then it will all take care of itself. Trust me, karma is that bitch. <laughs> That's another thing. Right. I mean, you could tell the authorities, but then the question is, is like, what will that cost you, if anything? Like, what, what would right. that do to your reputational damage? I don't know. You're, I don't know. Like, you were in a relationship with this guy and you didn't think he was married. Right. That being said, you getting a divorce because of your own infidelity only to date your divorce lawyer, on its face, this looks a little messy. Right. My, my infidelity is not known to anyone. Mm. Um, but... Still correct. I, I don't disagree. It does look messy. I mean, if you really think this guy is somehow a danger to other people as a lawyer, then right. report him. But if, you know. Yeah, if that's his chick and he's done this multiple times just for pleasure, you know, entertainment value, I mean, then we, it is wrong and it's unethical. But we, she, you know, she doesn't know that. Do right, you know that right. to be true? Is it a repeat no, offender? I don't know that to be true. I did, yeah. For I did, all we I know was, right. that, you know, I'm not in any way condoning what he did, right. but for all we know, he met you, fell magically in love with you, and dis didn't do the right thing in terms of handling his business. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out, you don't necessarily felt like he had any sort of position of power over you. And it sounded like, I'm guessing the idea of dating your divorce lawyer, like whatever, well, however wrong right. that felt probably mm -hmm. was fun. You know, I guess what I'm saying, you're an adult and you, you chose to date him too, uh, knowing, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm guessing you knew he wasn't allowed to date you before you, you knew he had a family and you had no problem with it then. Yeah. Yeah. To a point. Um, I did not know that you couldn't date a client. However, that was not my intention when we started chatting. That was never in the back of my mind, like, hey, I want to date this guy. No, no, I know um, that. But I'm saying, like, while you were dating him, not knowing he had a family. Right. When did you find out that wasn't allowed after you found out he had a family? Right. Yeah, when I looked into it. Gotcha. Yeah, after. I'm yeah. willing to bet. Let's say, for example, you didn't find out he had a family. And let's say you're on a date. And he was like, I got to tell you something, by the way. Like, I shouldn't be doing this. And I'm only telling you this because I care about you. I like you. But, like, can you just, like, don't tell people because I could get in, in big trouble? My guess is you wouldn't have reported him. And probably, if anything, it probably made you feel special <laughs> because he is breaking the, you know, he's doing something he shouldn't yeah, yeah. do just to date you, is my guess. I know it's, like, a, not, a very unsatisfying answer. But the, I feel like the best thing you could do is remove yourself from that situation get a new lawyer it's not your business to tell his wife nothing good's going to come of it yeah technically he's doing something wrong from a lawyer standpoint but you have no idea whether this is a pattern at all and you would only be doing it for revenge purposes you could sell yourself that you're doing the right thing but you're only doing it because you found out he's married and it's not illegal to have an affair it's illegal to date the client so the thing that you are trying to punish him for isn't the thing that is wrong. Am I making sense? Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I just don't know if you'll, I think you'll get instant satisfaction, but maybe long-term regret and it will create more of a mess. And then you'll, and then you'll have a lawyer out to get you or maybe it won't right. be a lawyer for very long. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I think it just creates a lot of drama in, in your life when I'm guessing, given that your divorce is not finalized, 
it sounds like you, you know, you've been doing some work post separation from your husband. I would assume that you want, would want to have more calmness and more peace and less drama in your life. And I think doing more with this guy, even if that is reporting him, is, is, is not creating less drama in your life, but more. And as far as your journey as a person and your healing from your divorce, I don't think this helps it. I think it just right. keeps you invested in a toxic situation. That would be my two right. cents. Mm-hmm. I think, can, right. I, can I interject? Yeah, please, yeah. Um, I just think that you have to do what is sane for yourself. You know what I mean? So like the goal is not to tell you, obviously do this, do this, do that, because, you know, at the end of the day, you have to sleep with yourself at night, right? So whatever, put, you know, makes you sleep at right. night is the right thing to do, I would say. So definitely reflect on what best option will make sure that keeps you in a zen place okay so telling the wife there's a lot of trickle down effect on that right the kids are involved now they're you know so remember that and we're not saying don't tell the wife if that's what you want to do and you think that's the best way for you to feel good about yourself you like it i love it but just always look at all options and then you do your pros and cons so create that grid line pros calm on each each single action because there will be a reaction okay Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not a negative person. I'm not yeah, about right. negativity. Right. I'm not about any drama. And my intent of, of reporting him and or telling his wife was not to cause any drama or any more bad vibes. Right. 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 But, but you, but you, yeah. you would be if you did, to be clear. Right. Yeah. Right. But then again, I feel yeah. like, you know, it's okay to be selfish sometimes, you know, and that's one thing I've learned, honestly, like, with what I'm going through in my journey, it taught me to be selfish. Whatever makes me feel good, whatever makes me, you know, onwards, you know. So as long as you have a positive outcome for yourself is what I think right. should happen. And we can't tell you what that equation looks like. You got to do one plus one equals two. So that's on you, right? right. It's an internal reflection of, on everything. And I just think that telling his wife, not telling his wife, what's the outcome of that? And will you be able to be okay to have this go on for six more years if you told his wife? not telling his wife and telling the authorities. Now, what does that happen? The, the depositions, we don't know anything about this legality stuff. So everything, like I said, it has a reaction and you, you create that, that roadmap knowing what that end result may look like. And if it satisfies you, do you. Yeah, but right. what if she convinces herself it does that? Like, I mean, there's a difference between mm-hmm. short term uh, and long term. And long term. Right. Short term, I might, it, it probably will feel good in the moment. Long term, mm-hmm. I think it's only going to create more drama. In I your think life. You, and you may want to talk to also right. a professional, a therapist, maybe, because I think that there's a lot of healing happening or needs to happen from the divorce itself, from all this, the mess from the past. And then now right. how it's affecting you. Don't create the cycle. So you need to break off the chains of that. And then maybe that professional can help you go through the, the right state of mind to be able to make a decision moving forward with the situation. Right. The therapist did say it's reportable and definitely should be reported. Mm-hmm. Um, the therapist told you to do that? Lot- yeah. Yeah, there, but there's a lot of energy that goes into that. So it's like, do you want to yeah. spend your energy on that? Sure. That's my, true. um, yeah, my kind of vibe is, you know, best revenge is live a good life. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not out for revenge on him or to try to ruin his life, right? Um, bad choice. Were you maybe, intimate? I don't know. May I ask? Were you intimate to a point? Not okay. fully. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's <laughs> my two cents. Um, but keep us posted what you decide to do. Absolutely. I am very curious. Okay. All right. Best of luck. Well, best of luck. <laughs> uh, don't let it get you down. I know yeah. it's probably a bummer. Next time, yeah, you know. Yeah, a lot of trust. You know, don't shit where you eat, you know. Don't, Absolutely. So to speak. Yep. True. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was already kind of a red flag to date your divorce lawyer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How did it even start? Totally. How did it begin? Like, who asked who out? Him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just wanting to know more details and, Mm. you know, wanted to flirt the line and needed to know everything. You must have asked him if he's ever done this before with another client, no? I did, and he said no. Hmm. No. Who knows if that's true? He also said he wasn't married. Exactly. Grain of salt. (laughs) Right. All right. Well, thank you for the call. Please keep us posted what you decided to do, regardless of what you decided. And uh, we appreciate the call. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, take care. Goodbye. All right, bye-bye. All right, Gertie. Wow, that was intense. I didn't know I was going to be taking, you know, into this zone, but wow. 
I like it. I can I can do this definitely. I'm like you know therapist Gertie, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was a lot. Messy, honey. Yeah, well, messy lives. His life. Yeah, right? such his life. Yeah. Gertie, can't thank you enough for coming. High five it. We appreciate you. Uh, can you let my audience know uh, where are, uh, all the good things you're doing, where they can follow you, all yeah. that fun stuff? Gertie Design Baby. Um, that's my Instagram, also my um, Facebook account, and also I am now just finishing my website, which is Gertify.com, and that's where all of the great things that I'm doing are going to be um, featured. So take a look and just you know stand by for the goodness of uh, Gertie experience. We appreciate having you on. Uh, don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at thevowelfiles.com. Make sure you follow Gertie and all the amazing things she's doing. And I think if there's nothing else, we'll be back on Monday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>